You're watching the Carolina Classic Fair Friday Night Rivals presented by Roan Law. Tonight, that wacky COVID schedule gives us a very intriguing non-conference matchup as 2-0 East Wilkes pays a visit to 1-0 East Surrey. And from the shadow of Pilot Mountain, we welcome you to Diamond Stadium. Chris Edwards, happy to be alongside Mark Covert and delighted to have you with us. Mark, intriguing game tonight. East Surrey 1-0 off that COVID pause, facing a stern test from 2-0 East Wilkes, who's looking to make a statement tonight. Yeah, and East Wilkes has a big test here tonight. East Surrey County, big time for them to step up, make a challenge to these Cardinals at home. Let's see if they can get it done. As we look at our impact players tonight, we'll start with East Wilkes. It begins with that Wilkes Central transfer who's been dynamic, Anthony Graham. Yeah, Graham's been electric for this offense, a true weapon for them, leading them in receiving and rushing. And when we're talking about weapons on the other side, Trey Armstrong, a stalwart on defense, is going to look to stymie that attack tonight. It should be a great night for football. And as we get ready to kick things off, we say hello to the third member of our team, Hannah Brady. Thanks, guys. I'm down here on the field of David H. Diamond Stadium where both teams are getting ready for a kickoff. This Friday night matchup was one that was not on either team's radar coming into this week. The East Wilkes High School was originally scheduled to play West Caldwell coming into this week until they were suddenly dropped and left without a Friday night opponent. Luckily, the East Surrey High School Cardinals were also searching for a Friday night opponent, and they're here to play tonight. Excited to see what happens out here on the field tonight as both these teams are currently undefeated. Mark and Chris, back to you. All right, Hannah, thanks a lot. We're ready for kickoff, and we'll have it for you next right here on My48. Absolutely picture-perfect night here in Pilot Mountain as we get ready for East Surrey and East Wilkes. As you see East Wilkes breaking through the banner, getting ready for kickoff tonight. We had the opening kickoff. East Surrey won the toss mark. They elected to receive the opening kickoff. We'll see them on the field first as we take a look at the starting lineup for this East Surrey offense presented by the United States Navy. Set your career in motion. Call your local Navy recruiter today. America's Navy forged by the sea. Noticeable absence there. No Sam Witt, the starting right guard. Big for an offense that two weeks ago put up 275 yards on the ground. Yeah, uh, an engine for that offensive line, the leader of that group. I'm going to be interested to see how that starting five responds here tonight going forward. And on the flip side for this East Wilkes defense, they've got that 3-3-5 going on there. Watch out for Brennan Ardner, the middle linebacker, who's been really good for the Cardinals this year. Yeah, and they're going to look to stymie this high-powered offense of East Surrey. They're going to have a big test here tonight, and it's going to start with getting pressure up front on Folger. Ready for tonight's first kickoff and what should be a barn burner between two teams that are looking to stake claim to their early season progress and maybe some validation for both of these teams. 
ready for our first kickoff tonight, which is brought to you by Arnold Jones at Arnold Jones Services Heating and Air. Your comfort and peace of mind is our priority and commitment to excellence. It's Hank Porter who will get us going tonight. Luke Bowman, Trey Armstrong back deep. And just a moment of pause as the ball slips off the tee. We've waited a couple of weeks. You and I have waited over a year and a half to do a game. What's a couple more moments? But we are certainly glad to be back with you on the Carolina Classic Fair Friday Night Rivals and off we go from Pilot Mountain. This is returnable from the five. Kyle Zinn makes a man miss and is banged down to the 26 yard line. And it'll be first and 10 for East Surrey, operating from their 26-yard line. They're led by junior quarterback Folger Boaz, who had a phenomenal start to the season. The next in the Boaz family lineage that has been terrific playmakers really throughout Trent Lohman's tenure at East Surrey. Absolutely. It is a great lineage to come from. And Folger, like you said, partner, is the next in that line of great athletes to come from this family. Big-time arm, great decision-maker, and he loves to take shots down the field. It might not be surprised if he takes one early on here. But we'll go to the air, no surprise there on first down. A little quick out and a gain of just a couple of yards out to the 30-yard line. Catch made by Colby Johnson, his 16th of the season. Well, little play there. Start out, get yourself going and yourself in positive territory going forward. Nice little three-yard pickup to get yourself going. Feel yourself into that comfort zone. Get yourself where you feel confident, and then you start to really open up the playbook. That's almost like a running play for a quarterback. Absolutely. It? Spread the field. Johnson, the motion man. Boaz, backside pressure, left-handed quarterback, dumps one that's incomplete. Trying to hit his tight end, Stephen Brantley, who was looking to make his first catch of the season, but brings up the game's first third down. Yeah, that may have been tipped coming out of his hand that time. Boaz, good decision, rolls out and is running out of room. Finds his man downfield, but may have just been tipped to the line and caused that ball to die before it could get to his receiver clean. This is an East Wilkes defense. It's been really good over the first two games, allowing just 14 and a half points per contest. Three quarterback sacks and had some pressure on Boaz. Facing their first third down of the night, Boaz will keep it on the option. Wants to call his own number and achieves the first down plus some. Out across the 45-yard line, it's our first Crescent Ford first down. Ride to the game in style with a new F-150 from Crescent Ford of High Point. Yeah, the senior wide receiver Allen came in motion from right to left that time. Ran a little speed option out to the left. And Boaz decided to keep it himself and pick up the first down. Good decision not to pitch it, keep it himself. And that's how he moved the chains. Gain of 13 on third down as East Surrey marches up near midfield. Opening drive of the football game. Boaz on the bootleg. Has time, wants to take a shot downfield and incomplete. Was looking for Leighton Allen, the senior wide receiver, but too tall for the 6'2 senior. And you can already see the athleticism that East Surrey recognizes that Boaz has. Get him outside the pocket, allow him to have the option to run with it if he wants to, or if he can take it down the field and take a shot. He has that option to make that play. Is it by design that East Surrey is rolling Boaz out to the right side because he's a left-handed quarterback? It could be. To protect him that way. He's not going to be throwing across his body almost in that way, and he can just stay accurate with the football. First rushing play of the night, trying to pick a lane, making a big hole. This is Trey Armstrong who we highlighted in the open, and it's Armstrong into Cardinal territory, picks up the first down. And yeah, noted how great of a defensive player he is, but offensively he's a key contributor as well. Nice move right behind the line of scrimmage. Get away from one tackler, get up field, and get up another first down for this East Surrey offense. They're rolling right now. Eighth carry of the year for Armstrong, his first of this game. Ran for 42 yards in their season opening victory over Star Mount a couple of weeks ago. Of course, East Surrey supposed to entertain Mount Airy last week, but had that COVID pause. Now it's Armstrong again on back-to-back -back carries. Lowers his head for three yards. A couple of Cardinals swarming to the football there. Gain of just three. It's about staying on schedule. Don't have those plays that result in negative yardage and put you behind where you want to be. Second and manageable right here. Even after three yard gain on that first down run, put yourself in a position where you're able to open up that playbook and expand. And you're not going to constrict it because you had a negative play on the play before. Heavy formation here. They send Armstrong to the slot. Instead, it's a run for Brett Clayton. His first touch of the ball game. 
And now third down and medium for East Surrey. You are starting to notice East Wilkes is starting to get some of that pressure on the point of attack right in the middle of that offensive line. And that's going to be the key point for them in this game, whether it's the pass or the run, is getting penetration within the offensive line and dominating up front if they have a chance to come out with a victory tonight. East Surrey has already picked up one third down conversion on this opening drive of the game, looking for a second here. Again, putting yourself in a manageable situation. Only four yards to go. This really opens up a lot of what you could do. Allen, the motion man. He'll go back to the ground. Armstrong tries to get to the edge and is forced out of bounds near the marker. It was Graham and Adams who were both in coverage, and it is enough for a first down. It's another solid run that time. Armstrong really making his presence felt here early on on the offensive end. Nice decision to take the ball outside. Don't stay within that, that pocket or the middle of the offensive line where they're getting so much pressure up front. Way to bounce it out and pick up the first. Boaz, plenty of time. Going to stand in there and throw one down the field. Pass is complete by, to Colby Johnson. And Johnson down to the 16-yard line. And that'll be right toward the first down marker. It is another Crescent Ford of High Point first down. You can ride to the game in style with a new F-150 from Crescent Ford of High Point. As we take another look. Oh, Boaz had a little bit on that thing. Fires it in there. The defender couldn't get there in time. Had a little bit mustard on the back end of that one and fires it in for another first down. Weston Brown in to make the stop as Boaz wants to throw. Swings one out this way. And another completed pass for Leighton Allen who dances his way inside the 10. By the way, East Surrey for the first time tonight achieving enough position to get into the Boost Mobile Orange Zone. Boost Mobile, America's lead it largest and fastest 5G network. I love the penetration, though, that time by East Wilkes. Gained the corner inside. Stopped that for being a touchdown. Able to pull Allen down from the backside. A couple catches on this drive for Allen. East Surrey looking to punctuate the game's opening drive. Boaz down to the five-yard line. He will have enough for another Crescent Ford of High Point first down. At least it appears to us. Officials are eyeing it. Just short. Now they're getting to him. And it is another Crescent Ford of High Point first down. And now first and goal coming for East Surrey. Really efficient drive. I, I kind of thought that maybe East Surrey would take a shot early on, see how talented these DBs are for East Wilkes, but it's been consistent and very methodical. Boaz straight ahead, and not much there, able to move the pile forward. Looked like it was Tyler Marsh that got in there first to make the hit. The junior making his third stop of the season. And now brings up a second down and goal to go for the Cardinals. Yeah, that offensive line in the middle, that center and two guards really need to start getting some push up front. And they've been, uh, despite the excellent drive that they've had so far, that's been the weak link of this offensive attack. You mentioned the right guard, no Sam Witt, the outstanding senior, Connor Key starting in his place. Now, look at this from the shotgun. Boaz will hand it off again. And Clayton straight ahead, he'll be stopped short. And now third down and goal coming up if you're Trent Lohman the head coach and offensive coordinator of East Surrey. What's your play call here? Well, the weak point of this defense so far in this drive has been on the edges and outside of the pocket when they've been able to move that pocket and get Folger Boaz outside and allow him to use his feet to create space for his receivers to get open. That's where they've been dangerous on this drive so far. Coach Loman in his fourth year at East Surrey, ninth year as a head coach, hired in 2018 to lead this program on third and goal. Folger Boaz throws and making the catch and hit immediately is Leighton Allen and that'll bring up fourth down and goal. What a nice play by Titus Miller, the corner up to make a big tackle. Well, you, you notice these screens. It's been a theme for them in this drive already. A couple of them, I think this is the third one that they ran and was not fooled that time. Great play to stick to his receiver. Allen couldn't get his good footing. Maybe a, a, a bad throw that time by Boaz keeping the ball up. He has him on the ground and leads him maybe to score. Now it's Stephen Brantley on to try the field goal. He hit a 47-yarder in week one. This will be from 21 yards away. And pushed it. The defense of East Wilkes holds a bend but do not break defense. They survive the opening drive, and now East Wilkes a chance to come out and take the game's first lead. You got to love that. That's a huge momentum builder for East Wilkes. They drive the whole way down the field. They're running it. Again, very methodical drive. You find a way on the first two downs. The stop runs up the middle. Third down comes up. You stop that screen. A great play on the corner's part. And then you're able to force a bad kick out of East Surrey. That's a great defensive stand for the Cardinals of East Wilkes. 
So they will come to the line. This is a run heavy offense, averaging almost 315 yards per game on the ground. They're led by Briggs Gentry, their junior quarterback. But they will spread the field here on first down. Bertie Martin in the backfield, but this time it's an end around. And not much doing there as it was actually kept by Gentry, the quarterback who can rush. We'll take a look at the starting lineup now for the East Wilkes offense presented by the United States Navy. Set your career motion. Call your local Navy recruiter today. America's Navy forged by the sea. Yeah, we already talked about how electric this offense can be on the ground, that potent rushing attack. It's going to be up to Briggs Gentry and number three, Anthony Graham, to make those plays here tonight. Graham can do it all. He's in the slot here. He's rushed for 269 yards this year. He's already had four catches as well. He's Siri showing blitz on second down and eight. Gentry. And the catch made by Graham slips by one defender and wants the edge and has a first down as he dances out across the 35 yard line. Another Crescent Ford of High Point first down after a gain of 16. I'll tell you why you can see it right there too. He was dead to rights behind the line of scrimmage on that one. Great way to get out of the first tackle and then get upfield to get those yards. Watch here. Just breaks that first one, then works his way back outside. Use that side of the field to his advantage. And from there, it was all speed and athleticism to get those 16 hard-earned yards. The transfer from Wilkes Central making an immediate impact. He rushed last week in their victory over Surrey Central for 243 yards and three scores. He's combined for four total touchdowns this year. Sure, Coach Wilmoth really glad that he decided to make the move. A new set of downs. Graham in motion. Picking a hole here, it's Brody Martin, the running back. Martin with a gaping hole into Cardinal territory. Tight ropes the sideline, and it's a touchdown for East Wilkes. 56 yards. And a Sunbelt Reynolds touchdown. Sunbelt Reynolds offering rental locations across the triad to quickly deliver ready-to-work equipment whenever and wherever you need it. So we already saw Gentry have the first carry, then a little t t screen pass out to, Ar to, not to Armstrong, but out to Anthony on the edge. And now this time Martin just goes right around that right side, able to take it down. Great motion to fool the defense in that play. Sucked in by the motion on that one, just breaks it outside. And again, all speed along that sideline. This rushing attack so potent in the first two weeks off to a fast start in this one. Already the 10th rushing score for the Cardinals in their first two plus games. And now Hank Porter on for the extra point. Six of eight in point afters this year. Make it seven of nine. And how about the upstart East Wilkes? They're looking to go to three and oh. And then the Western Division champion on the ropes here early. It's seven nothing East Wilkes. We'll have more coming up after this on our Friday Night Rivals presented by Roan Law. Chris, Mark, and Hannah, and the rest of our great Carolina Classic Fair Friday Night Rivals team with you, presented by Roland Wall. And a little bit of a surprise early on. It's East Wilkes marching down the field, really having no issue at all as they claim the game's first lead. A chance for East Surrey to get back on the field and hopefully finish on offense. They had a really great drive to start the ball game, couldn't put it in, missed a chip shot field goal, and now the offense back out on the field. This is Kyle Zinn on another return. Zinn to the 30. Zinn has a seam, and Kyle Zinn will make a house call for East Surrey. What an answer for the Cardinals. <laughs> 85 yards and a Sunbelt Rental touchdown. 
And how about that for explosive? I was about to say, how are they going to respond? It's always interesting, that first game that we're going to be doing this year, how are they going to respond after getting hit in the, the gut twice like that, not being able to finish and put any points on the board on their first loss offensive drive? And then three plays, a long touchdown run given up to East Wilkes. How do the Cardinals of East Surrey come back and answer with a kickoff return to potentially tie this one back up and get us back to level ground? Now, Stephen Brantley, who missed the field goal a moment ago, on to drive the West Rock Extra Point. West Rock, your local leader in paper packaging and displays. Come join our team at jobs.westrock.com. Brantley, four of five in point afters this year. Drives that one home. And just like that, East Surrey responds with an 85-yard kickoff return for a touchdown. Explosive plays on both sides. And we'll have more coming up after the break. Zinn, 85 yards to the house. And it's 7-7 in the opening quarter. Kyle Zinn goes 85 yards and ties the ball game up with about five minutes to go here in the first quarter. 7-7. Good matchup between the two Cardinals. And an early season litmus test for both of these clubs. East Surrey 1-0, East Wilkes 2-0. Again, East Surrey coming off that COVID pause last week, showing no effects here early. As this one sails into the end zone, and East Wilkes will start from the 20-yard line. Oh, I was going to say, I thought that was a pretty noticeable thing when we talked with both coaches. You sense the level of confidence amongst both of them. And even for East Wilkes, they know this is a tough test coming into East Series home and trying to win this game. But there was no no swagger lost on their end. And this is a, a team that's 2-0. and They're looking for their first win over East Surrey since 2017. They won here at East Surrey that year, 36-20. It's a team that went 2-5 and five last year. You start to look at, at the way things have gone. They're off to a 2-0 start for the first time since 2017. And a win tonight, maybe they start to believe that, you know what, we could be the class of 1A West. And I think for a lot of teams, you look at last year being the spring, yeah. and you kind of throw it out the window. You say, yeah, I mean, we may have done some good things. Oh, uncontested all the way to the quarterback. A sack for Cole Pruitt, his first of the year. You, you say we did some good things in the spring. I see the... Yeah, the East, lot here, here, for East, so. Series TV, East Series defense presented by the United States Navy. Call your local Navy recruiter today and set your career in motion. The Navy forged by the sea. But that spring season, a lot of coaches will say, well, what did we do well? Let's build upon that and not really focus on those negatives. And, and for the teams that won state championships, great. But a 2-5 and five record is something you're not going to look back on fondly. Find those positives. And that's what's resulted in a 2-0 and start here for East Wilkes. And convincing 2-0 and start. 42-7, to 40-22. Now, on second and long, a screen is batted down. And another nice play right there through the middle. It was Gavin Atkins, the 6'2 junior, that got his paw up there on it. Yeah, absolutely. His first game, three tackles for a loss and six total. Very active along that defensive front for Gavin Atkins. And again, that time just sniffed it out, put his big paw up in the air. It wasn't even accidental, hoping he might hit it. I mean, he swatted it down, knowing that football was right there. And now third down and all the way to Mayberry for the first down. So now we finally get to see what this offense is going to do when they're behind schedule. Try to set up a screen in the last one. Good play call in all honesty, but a better play by East Surrey on their end. Third and 19 officially. It's their first third down of the night. And they'll stay on the ground. And getting back the penalty or the sack yardage was Brody Martin who ran for the touchdown earlier. 
And it'll bring up fourth down, and you imagine playing the field position game, you'll see East Wilk select the punt. Yeah, I'd like to think so, too. A nice run there on third down. Get, again, getting back that sack yardage that you lost on first down, but obviously not enough to pick up the first. And now you're going to rely on your special teams to play that field position game and hopefully pin this East Area offense, which we now get to see maybe again. Trey Armstrong, who's dangerous in his own right, back mm -hmm. deep to receive this punt of Kyle Porter. So many playmakers on the field tonight. Now you Surrey having to run somebody on here very late. Now have the full complement of players out there. East Wilkes running a player on, I beg your pardon. Porter with some pressure in his face. This is returnable for Armstrong from the 44. Needs a block. Now down the edge, and he is upended at the 35-yard line. Nice return. And good field position for East Surrey as they start their second offensive drive. And one of the stars on that first offensive drive, Armstrong does a good job of getting his offense in good field position. Starting in plus territory on this drive and a short field to go. Very manageable with only 35 yards to Peter. There's Trent Lohman, hired in 2018 from Bandy's High School. He was the head coach at Bandy's, played there for his dad. Actually took over for his dad who Goes to Bandy's for 26 years. Boaz with pressure, dumps one down the field to the tight end Brantley for another Crescent Ford first down. It's catch to come back on that one. Over the middle, a little late and behind him was Boaz. Another one of those rocket balls. Look at this thing, just zips out. Good concentration to come back for that one. Gain of 15, no surprise. Boaz, pretty good baseball players, committed verbally to North Carolina to play for Scott Forbes and the Tar Heels. Boaz looking. And nearly an incredible catch by Allen. It's off of his fingertips. Talk about Boaz. The entire Boaz family is seemingly play quarterback. His brother, you now a quarterback for the Tar Heels. So a, a bit of a divided household tonight. You wonder where the Boaz family is. Are they here at East Surrey watching Folger? Or are they up in Blacksburg watching the elder of the brothers? Oh, they may have just split the difference. Half the family comes here and half the family stays up in Blacksburg as North Carolina takes on the Hokies. Boaz is open to being a dual sport athlete in college, open to playing football. Why not? He's had a really good high school career as Armstrong forges his way ahead for a handful of yards. It's not just, three, bring up third down. It's not just that, too. The coaches will tell you across all levels of sports, especially high school and even in college, there's some rare exceptions where you have those dual sport athletes. It's great for the athlete because you're able to build on muscles that you may not normally use in your primary sport. Football may be the primary sport for some guys, but baseball really lends that to the throwing motion. And Boaz keeps his own number and carries a man with him down to the five-yard line. Beg, I beg your pardon, it was Allen who got the carry. Again, at 13, another Crescent Ford to first down. We credit as a pass to Boaz that time. A little jet sweep coming in motion right in front of Folger. Just dumps it off, and Allen does the rest. Again, so many playmakers on the field tonight, especially offensively when North Surrey, Surrey is on the field. And it starts with number two. This is Boaz on the bootleg. Dumps one to the end zone and a touchdown. It's the tight end Brantley, his first touchdown of the year. And it's East Surrey who surges in front. Nice catch that time, a little bit easier that time as well. Uh, Boaz decided to take a little bit off it, but again, rolling outside the pocket, allow him to make an easy throw on the run. You're allowing him to get out in space and make plays where the defense is gonna be forced to either stay home or run along with them. And at some point, at some level, they're gonna lose track of some of the guys on the field. Second touchdown toss for Boaz this year. Another Sunbelt Reynolds extra point, or touchdown. And now the West Rock extra point is true, and a seven point lead for East Surrey. So 35 yards to go, and they cash in in just a few plays. Uh, a good offensive response now. Of course, they had the kickoff return for a touchdown to respond to a long touchdown run for East Wilkes. But a good punt return leads to an awesome offensive drive for the Cardinals to be Surrey. But that's what Trent Lohman told us. Uh, we asked him if he wanted to be more run versus pass and said, you know, if I need to run for 300 to win or pass for 300 to win, comfortable doing both. And they can do it. That's the thing. It's not just comfortable doing both. They can absolutely do it. That's how dynamic of an offense this East Surrey team has. It starts with the quarterback. We know Folger is fantastic, but there's pieces around him between Armstrong, Allen, Bowman, these guys making an impact. 
all around him, that's going to be such a key factor to what they do every single night. And a lot of those pieces have already started to shine bright here in this one. If you're East Wilkes now, you come down, you score in your opening drive, stuttered a little bit in your second drive. What do you want to see here down seven points late in the first quarter? Get back on schedule. That first drive, those three plays, they were just running and doing what they were wanting to do. Now, of course, as the game goes on, you get out of your quote-unquote script, that first few plays you go through to feel a defense out. Now you just got to see what they're doing and adjust. A lot of, of motion can help them offensively. Brantley puts it in motion again. It's another Arnold Jones kickoff. And this one from the goal line is returnable. And the speedy threat, Anthony Graham, who's already run one back 95 yards this year, is up to the 31-yard line. A 31-yard return and decent field position for East Wilkes as they start their third drive. Very shifty return that time. Graham just weaving his way in and out of the kickoff unit there. And picking up some pretty good yardage. Set his offense and himself subsequently in good field position to start this drive. Only a junior. I got a feeling that Mr. Graham is going to be playing at the next level in a couple of years. If he continues to play at the pace that he's playing at right now, absolutely. Again, we noted he, he leads his team in receiving and rushing right now, a dual threat. It almost seems like the wide receiver tag that he has on him is almost like a formality. More like an athlete. More of like an offensive weapon than an athlete. From the shotgun, this is Graham in motion. Instead, it's Martin who has the touchdown run, and he has swarmed under a loss of a yard. A couple of Cardinals pecking their way in the backfield. It was Brett Clayton who makes the initial hit. A good way to swarm. Martin's got the bulk of the carry so far in this one. And Martin, a guy that East Surrey really high on, a junior defensive end, 10 tackles to lead the team in their season opener. He could be another one of those really special players to come through this East Surrey program. You'll see a lot at this level, too. A lot of two-way players. You don't have the roster sizes as some of the higher levels do, so guys have to contribute on both sides of the football. On the ground, it's faked, and that one too tall. They were trying to hit one of their wide receivers, Weston Brown, but a dangerous pass over the middle brings up third down. Yeah, Trey Armstrong looked like he had a beat on that one. Came right across the middle, broke it up, but was hoping for the pick. Good way to read the football, get there, just finish that play, intercept it. But nonetheless, still puts this offense of East Wilkes in, in negative territory for this drive. Lost one yard on the play before, now third long, and that's not where they want to be offensively. And talk about staying ahead of the chains for an offense that's predicated on running the football. Second straight drive, they have been off schedule. We'll have to pass, pressure off the edge, and that one incomplete. Trying to hit Titus Miller on the outside, but once again, a three and out forced by this East Surrey defense. A lot of pressure came on the right side of that offensive line that time, just swarmed on that side. An overload blitz is usually what that's referred to. A lot of defenders, too many defenders for one offensive line to block, even with some help from the backs or tight ends. Good play call that time defensively for East Surrey. You'll see it there. Just not enough bodies, and you got to get that ball out quick. And that's what caused an inaccurate throw and another three and out for this East Wilkes offense. Been a tough start for Gentry, the quarterback of East Wilkes, just one of his first four for 16 yards. And now a chance for more good field position here for East Surrey. Play clock dwindling, a high snap pulled down by Porter and just gets it away. Takes a sideways hop and good field position again for the Cardinals. In this battle of the two clubs, you can say Cardinals and be right all the time. Absolutely. Or you could be wrong. You never know. There's, there, there is a very gray area tonight with the mascots. <laughs> But pretty was, good one so far. Was curious coming in how East Surrey would respond. They ramped themselves up to play a couple of weeks ago, beat Starmount. Then, of course, the pause last week forced the game against Mount Airy to be canceled. Had that week off, but so far showing no signs, at least to us, that that pause hurt them a whole lot. Yeah, I mean, they've operated really like you would think they would have, like we heard they would have. As another run by Armstrong takes them into another positive game and sets them up with a solid second down opportunity. But... They've just operated, I think, the way we expected them to. When you talk about them and hear what they do, and see another strong run here for Armstrong, that this is just kind of what E-Siri does. Uh, this is exactly what they do. Methodical, methodical. And at some point, those deep shots are going to start coming because they're going to start lulling you to sleep with these runs, these short passes, these screens. And eventually, you're going to get, you're going to fall asleep. Some, someone creeps too far to the line of scrimmage. 
all of a sudden you get a deep shot behind your defensive backs. 488 yards of total offense a couple of weeks ago. Now Boaz stands in there. He's sacked. In to make the sack. Tyler Marsh. The second sack of the game. Marsh with his first of the year. And now third down and long for the first time tonight for East Surrey. And a great job in penetration and getting pressure on Boaz that time. That was the play they were looking for, the deep shot. You'll notice right here, he look, has a little pump, a little hesitation. They were trying to run a stop and go with Allen along the East Surrey sideline. No go, too long to develop, and great pressure up front by the Cardinals of East Wilkes. How about Marsh here just shedding his block and going unabated to the quarterback? Now third down. Safe play here with Armstrong, who spins off of one tackle. Marsh in there to help finish off the stop. Easton Martin in there to help bring him down. Martin with his team high 18th tackle of the year. And as the first quarter dwindles, it'll be fourth down and medium coming up for East Surrey. A great start for both of these clubs. A really compelling ball game between a couple of undefeated teams early in the high school football season. At the end of one, it's a seven point lead for East Surrey here at home. And we're back with more after this. Fourteen seven East Series. We start the second quarter. We're back with tonight's winning row. Everybody on tonight's winning row will receive free tickets to the Carolina Classic Fair that runs October first through tenth. The Carolina Classic Fair, second to none in 2021. Good to see things returning to more of a sense of normal after we missed the high school football season last year. We have not missed any explosive plays in the first quarter from either of these sides. No, not at all. It's been really an offensive performance, I think, that we've expected out of this one so far. The, the long run being the sole touchdown for East Wilkes so far in this one. East Surrey has really, after that first drive, coming up empty after getting right up against the goal line of East Wilkes. Last two drives, kickoff return for a touchdown, punches it in on a short opportunity. Now let's see what they can do on their third offensive drive of the game. So we begin the second quarter, it is East Surrey facing a fourth down and six. And Trent Loman looks like he's gonna leave his offense on the field as he approaches midfield here. Fourth and six, now Boaz might have been trying to get them off sides, and he did. It is the first flag of the game, and that'll be five yards on this East Wilkes def defense, but it'll still bring up a fourth and one. With that being said though, it is a fourth and one. It's no longer a fourth and six. So now everything in your playbook is basically open at this point. And I wouldn't be surprised they're going to power it ahead with Armstrong. Operating from the shotgun. This is Armstrong straight ahead and spins his way across midfield down to the 47-yard line. Needed one, got four, and another Crescent Ford 
first down, check out the newest Ford trucks at CrescentFord.com. Yeah, the one caveat to what East Wilkes has been able to do in the middle of that defense, that offensive line so far tonight, they've been able to disrupt it, but East Surrey's still been able to get some form of yardage out of it. Picks up the one yard and keeps this one going. Seventh carry of the game for Armstrong, now up to 38 yards. Boaz, empty backfield, wants to take a shot, has Armstrong open and led him too far. Had Graham in coverage, and that would have been a surefire six for the Cardinals. Yeah, absolutely. Get Armstrong out in space just a little bit too much that time by Boaz. Takes a little bit off of it, a little more air maybe, and lead Armstrong. Like you said, that's a surefire six points on the board. He's the quarter, he's the pitcher on the baseball team. He threw the fastball there, needed to go with the changeup. Yeah, a little bit. A little air on the thing. Just take some, say, take some off of it. Notice that tonight. Maybe he's a little bit antsy. Back to throw again, has plenty of time. Going to take another deep shot, looking for Allen, and it's incomplete. Good coverage that time. In the secondary by Weston Brown, the free safety. East Siri may be wanting a pass interference call, but looked like pretty good coverage from here. That looked like excellent coverage from here. Didn't get his head around, but still sticks his hands up. Looked like clean defense that time. Weston Brown sticking with Allen on that seam route right up the middle of the field. Great play on the back end of that one because it was also a well-thrown ball. We talked about putting some air under it. Boaz did it that time. Just great defense on the back end by Brown. Now third down and 10 to go here for East Surrey. They're three of five on third downs tonight. See if they can convert here on the right side of the 50. Boaz wants to throw again. Stands in. Throws this way underneath. Catch made by Johnson who shimmies his way inside the 30 and is knocked down at the 25-yard line. It's Easton Martin who brings him down again of 22 and moved the chains for the Cardinals. Yeah, absolutely was style that time. As soon as he got the ball in his hands, cuts up field, snatched some ankles along the way and picks up a fresh set of downs. Way to convert. And a good level concept that time too by the offense, allowing your receivers to run past and get the one guy underneath to pick up the first. Johnson averaging seven yards per catch coming in. And a big play there, his 16th catch of the season as Trent Lohman looks on. That was slick. 2019 NFHS, NCHSAA Coach of the Year. And then straight ahead, not much doing for Brett Clayton, who's been a nice change of pace back for Easter. Absolutely, a different look that time. Bigger target, but really works his way upfield. I think Armstrong is a little more that shiftier back. Hard, hard nose still, but a little shiftier speed. This time you're getting a little bit more of that power, a bigger body inside. Not bad when you're picking up three and four yards on first down. Certainly keeps the offense on schedule. A gain of three here, second and seven to go. Boaz takes a shot again, looking for Allen. Give him six. Cardinals by two scores. The senior who's been offered by Barton in for the Sun Belt Reynolds touchdown. A beautiful pass that time. Boaz just lofting it in there right into the back of the end zone. And no one was going to catch that but Allen on the back end of that one. Great throw, great anticipation, and a beautiful catch also by Allen, making sure his feet stayed in on that one, concentrates to pull that one in for six. Sunbelt Reynolds offering rental locations across the triad to quickly deliver ready-to-work equipment when and where you need it. And now a chance for Stephen Brantley to knock home another West Rock extra point. Your local leader in paper, packaging, and displays. Come join our team at jobs.westrock.com. And again, Brantley good on the extra point. It's a two-score lead for East Surrey as Boaz doing it all for the Cardinals tonight. It's a 14-point lead when you come back to Pilot Mountain.
Bolger Boas making plays on the offensive end. A lot of weapons for East Surrey. They lead by 14 points as we get ready for another kickoff here. It's another Arnold Jones kickoff. Get your heating and air conditioning fall tune-up special from Arnold Jones Services, heating and air conditioning. An important drive here for East Wilkes, looking for a good return. Already have one kickoff return tonight by East Surrey, but this time slipping was Weston Brown. And a long field to go for this Cardinal offense. It has really, Mark, sputtered over its last couple of drives. Yeah, we saw that first drive, those first three plays all resulting in positive yardage. Of course, the long touchdown run. But now, going forward into this one, this is a, a must-score drive. It, it kind of feels like that way for all intents and purposes, the way that the Cardinals on the opposite sideline for East Surrey are operating offensively. East Wilkes has to get something going on this drive, and they've got to put some form of points up on the board. Would certainly help with staying on schedule on first down. They've been behind the chains in each of their last couple drives. And not a whole lot here for Brody Martin, the first man through, maybe a yard. And again, what really helped them on that first drive is they did have a little bit of motion on each play where you had someone, whether it was uh, Edward, Anthony coming around the outside, Anthony Graham coming around and motioning behind the backfield. He was doing something and staying involved within the play. You talk about a guy being as electric as he is and he's staying stationary right now in that slot position. You got to find a way to get the ball into your playmaker's hands, and he is a playmaker. This time, they do put a motion, man. It's Brown, and the ball lost, and Gentry falls on it. Now it'll be a third down and very long coming up for this Cardinal offense. And that's the next problem. You have to operate a play. You need the ball in your hands. Just a bad snap that time, maybe a little bit too quick that time. Maybe the nerves starting to set in a little bit, knowing the importance of this drive. It's a team that's been really good in the plus minus differential, plus two in turnovers coming into play tonight, but now in the shadow of their own goalpost, have to make something happen here on third down and 16. You almost have to go down the street to these barbecue to get a first down. Yeah. They're going to be looking to. 0 for 2 on third downs tonight, and they will spend a timeout here before this critical third down play. We're coming up at halftime. We'll have the myspot.nc.gov halftime report, which will include this week's scholar athletes, participating school interviews with the principals, highlights from across the country, first half stats, and so much more. That's all coming up at halftime on the myspot.nc.gov halftime report. All right, so third down, very long, at your own 11-yard line if you're East Wilkes. If you're head coach, Jonathan Wilmoth, and he's also the offensive coordinator, what's the strategy here for your club? Well, you got to think, as we've stressed now several times on this drive, the importance of this drive. You got to take a shot through the air on this one. Of course, it's, it kind of feels like that, or you go with a conservative approach just to get out of this drive alive. Yeah, maybe three and out, and you've punted away, but I think you've got to try to take to the air here and see if someone can make a play for you. Again, we haven't seen anything that East Wilkes has done these last few drives that looked anything like that first drive. They've lost any sort of gimmick to their offense, it, it feels like. They haven't had any of those guys coming in motion. And again, Anthony Graham has not touched the ball since that first drive, I believe. And they've not had a single first down tonight. Only play was either a t rushing touchdown or a three and out. Yep. Third down and 16 here following the timeout. Gentry wants to throw. Pocket collapsing, and Gentry is sacked. Swarmed under by a dynamic duo in the backfield. Leading the charge is Brett Clayton. Well, like Trace Tilly also in there, adding to that great duo and another three and out. Yeah, just nice bend around the outside here. You see, just gets underneath. The first one there, able to wait for his guys to get there and help him out. A nice sack on third down for East Surrey. You bring pressure here if you're East Surrey? Oh, in the shot of your own goal post, absolutely. If nothing else, you force a bad punt. Cole Lambert will punt, gets this one away. Armstrong calling for the fair catch and muffed it. And I think East Wilkes fell on it. The officials will have to sort it out at the bottom of the pile, but it could be a huge turn of events for East Wilkes if they can come up with this loose ball. And it will indeed be East Surrey who falls on it. 
some fighting there at the bottom of the pile. You as a former offensive lineman know all about the bottom of those piles. Yeah, not a fun place to be. I'll tell you right now, there is one place on a football field you never want to be. It's at the bottom of a scrum. Rugby term. Whew. But a sigh of relief. It'll be East Surrey ball on a short field. They'll operate on the plus side of the 50 at the 33. Looked like East Wilkes had that one almost dead to rights. Ball may have just taken an awkward bounce and pop right back up in East Surrey's hands. Boaz to throw. Quick out. This way for Allen, who slips by one defender and is stood up. He might have fumbled the ball, but fortunately for East Surrey, the whistle there may be a little quick to stop the forward progress. Again, at four. Yeah, and I think Allen still got the ball back anyways, but you got to be careful in that situation. You already had on the very last play, Armstrong get a little loose with it and muff a punt. Now get up field, get some good yards on the swing pass, but. Just make sure you take care of that football. That's going to be the name of the game. And then you don't want to give East Wilkes any momentum. Regardless of what the score is right now, you cannot give them momentum. It's still way too close to even think about that. Feels like a must-stop drive here for East Wilkes. Johnson in motion. Boaz. Pressure. Scrambling. And tripped up. Nice open field play that time by Ardner, the leader on defense. One of those blue-collar kids, as Coach Wilmoth told us. Plays very hard, his 15th tackle of the year. And I really like the pursuit by the entire defense that time. It wasn't one guy getting to the quarterback. There's three white shirts all around him running to the football. Great pursuit that time. And that's how you're going to come out of here and get yourself back in this game. It's going to be those hustle and those effort plays to go the extra mile. Four of six on third down tonight of the Cardinals. Looking to convert here. Quick out for Allen. Evades two defenders, but will still be short of the marker. An interesting call here for Trent Lohman. He's got a pretty reliable field goal kicker in Brantley, who's already hit from 47 yards in the season opener, missed from 21 yards earlier tonight. And you're sort of in that gray area. I mean, this is almost too far. Yeah, no man's land is a common term for it. This will be almost from 50 if you kick it from here. So on fourth down and four, East Surrey will keep the offense on the field. They've already converted one fourth down tonight. And a timeout by East Wilkes prior to the play. Probably a smart timeout. Get yourself going because East Surrey was ready to go. I mean, they were, they, there was no gimmick there. They weren't trying to draw them off sides. They were ready to go. So nice, nice timeout called on that East Wilkes sideline to let your defense breathe a little bit. So with one timeout left now for East Wilkes. Coach Wilmoth over on the sideline. Fourth year at East Wilkes. He's done a really nice job with this program. Played quarterback at Surrey Central from 2002 to 2004. He's just the 11th coach in program history. Was an assistant football coach, co-athletic director at Mount Airy. On a pretty good team there, pretty good staff at Mount Airy. They won the 1AA title while Kelly Holder was the head coach. Mm -hmm. And actually replaced J.K. Atkins at East Wilkes when Atkins left to take the job at Mount Airy. Yeah. So a little bit of everything going on and keeping it all there in this Surrey County area. Yep. But has done a really good job. This club off to their first 2-0 and start since 2017. But on the short end of a 21-7 ball game here. Very even-keeled coach. I had a conversation with him. Just very even-keeled, very calm. Fourth and five for East Surrey. Offense stays on the field. Bootleg for Boaz. Dumps one down the field and hauled in by the tight end, Brantley. They will give him the 22, and that will be close to the marker and will give him a Crescent Ford of High Point first down. Ride to the game in style with a new F-150 from Crescent Ford of High Point. Wow, doing just enough to pick up that first down. But hey, if it works, it works. And that's the name of the game. Picking up that first down, just keeping this drive alive on fourth down. It's been the name of the game so far, and East Surrey on two separate opportunities has been able to get it done. Off their own, or off the plus 22 yard line, Boaz keeps it, pitches it, fumbled it, and somehow Armstrong still able to make a play and get positive yards. That was a terrific play just to get something. It was not Armstrong, it was Johnson, I beg your pardon, who had the fumble recovery and the rush. Well, it was a, a crazy play. It looked like a great play by East Wilkes to get to the backfield and put pressure on Boaz. Good job by Boaz to get out of that. 
and then from there it just kind of turned to a scrum. Somehow that turned into five yards for East Surrey, but good job all around. Boaz wanting to throw, hangs in there, dumps one for Armstrong, who skies up for the score. It's the third passing touchdown of the night for Folger Boaz, 17 yards, and the Cardinals soaring high at home. Just a touch too late getting to Boaz and just a touch too late getting to Armstrong on the back end of that one. Great throw, stands in the pocket, takes the hit, does Boaz and Armstrong on the back end to hold on to the football. Took a big hit in the end zone in his own right and another six points on the board. It's the first touchdown catch of the year for Armstrong and now time for the West Rock extra point. It's been a pretty nice night for Brantley trying to convert these extra points. High snap for the kick right into your living room for a 21 point lead. It's 28-7, East Surrey at home looking for their second win of the season. And we'll have more second quarter action for you after this timeout. You're watching the Carolina Classic Fair Friday Night Rivals presented by Roan Law. Roan Law. Seven, the lead for East Surrey here at home. And they'll be kicking off to East Wilkes as we approach a little more than halfway the point here in this second quarter. A chance for East Wilkes to get some much needed offense here as we prepare for another Arnold Jones kickoff. This one returnable from the two. And out across the 20 to the 25 yard line before the pile is swarmed. That was Martin on the return. 23 yards on the return. And what do the Cardinals of East Wilk, Mark Covert, have to do here to generate some offense? Well, it, it, we've said in the last few drives, it's getting back to what they've done that's been effective. And it's been involving motion in your plays. Some smoke and mirrors being involved in what you're doing pre-snap. Forcing the defense to think more than they can react. That's gonna be something that they've gotta get back to. We haven't seen it, and again, Anthony Graham has not touched that football. He will here. Looking to get to the edge. Graham turns it upfield. And for the first time now in five plays, some positive yards for East Wilkes. A gain of five. And Graham a little slow to get up here. And he's going to be chaperoned to the sideline to get checked out by the trainers. It looked like he slid down. We've actually seen that a few times here tonight. Some of these players have, have slipped on this, this field here at East Surrey, and it's almost kind of been in that same spot, too. A long touchdown run that East Wilkes scored earlier in the game. A defender for East Surrey was trying to chase down the ball carrier. He slipped over there as well. Brown in the motion, man. It's kept by the quarterback, Gentry, and he is speared down at the 39-yard line but it will be a Crescent Ford of High Point first down. It's their first first down of the game, and it comes with four and a half minutes to go in the second quarter. I'll take a look at it and keep on ticking, right? Gentry just took that ball right up the middle into the teeth of that East Surrey defense, picks up a nice little chunk of yards, pays for it on the back end, but again, moves the sticks. And how about the job of this East Wilkes club? We talked about it in the open. This is the third different opponent they had scheduled this week. They were supposed to play Wes Caldwell. Found out on Monday that game was not going to be played. Then they were supposed to play North Wilkes, who went on pause. So they've scrambled to find this game Monday afternoon. So in the span of about seven hours, went from playing one team to a third team. And with the play clock winding down, it is East Surrey that calls their first timeout, maybe a little unorganized on defense. But a nice job by both of these clubs 
both without a game, scrambling to find an opponent, making this contest happen. Well, and that's that's really tough. And you got to go just not just the players, but also the coaching staff because they've been prepping for games several weeks ahead of time. So now you got to think everything you worked for up to that point, game planning wise, figuring out the tendencies and what you can do to beat the team that week. All of a sudden, it's scrapped. So now you have to flex yourself a little bit and think, okay, how are we going to go about doing this? And maybe these are weeks where you just got to go with your bread and butter and then adjust in game. That's what it's really going to be. These are going to be the weeks that you see those in game adjustments really take hold and really change the outcome of games. About four minutes away from our myspot.nc.gov halftime report, which will include this week's scholar athletes, participating schools, interviews with the principals, highlights from across the country, and more. Timeout is over. First down, 10 to go for East Wilkes, trying to get some points before halftime. Remember, East Wilkes does get the ball to start the second half, so if they could punch one in here, a chance to capture a lot of momentum heading toward the locker room. Martin tries to get to the edge, but upended nicely by Trey Armstrong. Yeah, Armstrong just came shooting down from his safety position. He was way back. I mean, he was about 15 yards back from the line of scrimmage. He came shooting up. Tracked the ball carry that time, Martin. Just gets and watches, just tracks up. You can see him right here come up and knock Martin down, cut him down at his legs. Great tackle in open field. Gave him a good spot. So they got back to the line of scrimmage. A very fortunate spot, maybe with the right foot, not the left foot on the spot there. <laughs> Second down and 10 to go. Personnel being shuffled. In motion goes Brown. And nothing doing there for East Wilkes. Swarming to the football and swarming to Martin was the entire defensive line. Yeah, I don't think he got back to the line of scrimmage on that one. I, great penetration up front. It's like Josh Parker leading the way up from his inside linebacker spot. I mean, just a slew of Cardinals. A flock, if you will, getting into the backfield and swarming around Martin that time. Just nowhere to go at the point of attack. Third down and 12. Again behind the chains. East Wilkes 0 for 3 on third downs tonight. A low snap. Gentry having to make something happen. Just heaves up a prayer and incomplete. Was looking for Adams. There was a, some contact there, but I think it was just some feet getting tangled up. And another punt perhaps being forced by this East Surrey defense. That seems like the right call. Just a little bit of getting tangled up on the back end. You'll see it here. Yeah, just trip. The feet getting tangled up with each other. It was Luke Bowman on the coverage for East Surrey. Yeah. Clean play. Unfortunate, of course, for East Wilkes, but good call to not throw the flag on that one. Now we get to see Trey Armstrong back here for another punt. Cole Lambert will punt. Nearly blocked. Armstrong will return from the 28. Shimmies through a couple of defenders. Still on his feet. That's a whole lot of running for about 10 yards. He ran about 30 to get about 10. And it'll be first down for East Surrey as they attempt to put in what would be a back-breaking score at the end of the first half. Yeah, it might be one of the most entertaining 10-yard returns you'll see in quite some time. Just working his way up field, just grinding out yards. And like you said, Chris, I mean, he had to run about 30, 25, 30 yards just to get those 10. A reprieve here as he gets a breather as Folger Boaz in the offense back on the field. That ball's on the ground. And scooped up. A chance to return. It's Cole Lambert with his second fumble recovery of the year. And this will put East Wilkes in business. So that would make three times in the last two drives now for East Surrey that they've put the ball on the ground. And this time they just lost it. Just couldn't get it at that mesh point. And that thing was just wobbling out there for the taking and East Wilkes right place right time and there was a penalty on the play as well as it was scooped up by Lambert it was an illegal motion penalty called on East Surrey that penalty of course refused by East Wilkes and now they've got a shot on the right side of the 50 to punch this one in and maybe this is some of that rust that we hadn't seen yet from East Surrey that week off you got to try to lock back in now now, we talked about it, too. Remember, playing without their starting right guard, mm -hmm. you wonder if maybe the cohesion on the offensive line isn't quite what it normally is. Well, and maybe that also influences what your backs are doing. Those eyes come up a little bit early. You lose focus on the handoff. 
Hand off to Martin. Looking to spring to the edge. And instead is driven to the turf. Minimal gain, second down. And just like that, too, East Wilkes has new life. And they are well within East Surrey territory going in. They've got a chance, Chris, to really put some points on the board here going into the half. And again, they get the kickoff in the, oh, in the second half. They can really close the gap in this football game. Still no Anthony Graham out there, though, for East Wilkes. He went off on the last series with a lower body injury, it appeared, as we approach the final 100 seconds of this first half. Low snap. Gentry dumps it downfield and incomplete. Like he had Adams open in the flat, and Adams perhaps started to run before he had the football. And now a very critical third down forthcoming. Again, you can't really go anywhere without the football. East Surrey coughs it up on their offensive possession, and now East Wilkes not able to haul that one in. It would have been a first down at the very least. Oh, with four on third downs tonight. See if the Cardinals can convert their first of those third downs. 95 seconds remaining in the game's opening half. Brown in motion. On the sweep, needs a block. And spun down nicely at the 29-yard line. A good open field tackle by Kyle Zinn up from his strong safety position. That's just a really good job the whole way around that time by Kyle Zinn. Sheds the blocker, gets off. You'll see it right there. Just beats his blocker to the outside and then makes the tackle in space. Great play all around that time for Kyle Zinn. Fourth down and five. Have to go for it here in the final minute of the half. Trips to the top of your screen, another low snap. Again with time and underthrown. Once again, targeting Adams, and it's a turnover on downs. It's a bad pass that time. Trying to find Adams that time, just threw behind him. I don't know if there was a little bit of a miscommunication that time, because Gentry seemed pretty sure of where he was throwing that football. Just nothing doing, and a promising possession with promising field position comes up short. And no points are put on the board for a team that looked like it had a chance to really swing momentum their way. Gentry just one of seven through the air tonight for 16 yards in the game's first 23 minutes. Now Boaz trying to take a shot. Instead, a shot taken on him as he is driven down. Nice coverage by the two defensive ends. Martin and Alkier there. And it looks like it'll be the final timeout. No beggar pardon, it is East Surrey that calls their second timeout. Interesting to call the timeout here as we take another glance. Well, obviously, you can tell that East Surrey is trying to get some points on the board before the end of this first half. But plays like that aren't going to get them to where they need to go. Any negative plays, again, East Wilkes, that offensive or that defensive front, rather, making plays up front. And again, getting back to Boaz, getting pressure, and then resulting in the sack that time. It's been a very interesting ball game so far. Remember, as we told you, this game scheduled earlier this week because of some of the wacky COVID schedule. East Surrey got the game's opening possession, got down inside the red zone, couldn't score. Then a moment later, it was a touchdown for East Wilkes, kickoff return for East Surrey. And since then, 21 unanswered points for East Surrey here at home to take the 21-point lead. But, you know, even all the way around, now East Surrey scored 14 points in each quarter so far. With that being said, it's been a very sloppy second quarter on both sides. We've seen East Surrey lose some focus and cough the ball up three times in this quarter alone. And then just offensively for East Wilkes, they haven't been able to get much going at all. So for as fast as this game got off to a start offensively, it has almost crawled to a halt at this point. They'll spread the field, East Surrey will, five wide receivers. Boaz, pressure in his face, and for the third time tonight, he's sacked. And you wonder maybe does East Wilkes think about calling their final timeout? Down to half a minute to go for the first half. The only problem for East Wilkes is their, their offense is not tailored to throw the football. Again, we've seen that with Gentry, one for seven tonight. Gentry, though, threw for over 1,000 yards a season ago, but has not shown the propensity to want to throw the football this season. Right. And it looks like East Wilkes content to go to the locker room just down by the or the 21 point margin. Third and 25, screen pass. This is Allen, avoids a defender. And that should take us to the end of the first half. Hannah will get in position to grab Coach Lohman here in just a moment to get his thoughts on the first half. 
but it is a dominating second quarter for East Surrey here at home. They erase an early seven point deficit and they will take a 21 point lead into the locker room and Coach Lohman probably not happy with how the first half finished but probably happy with the way his team performed overall. Yeah, yeah you got to be. You're up by 21 and you think again how how the this first half ended wasn't the cleanest half of football but you got to be happy with that week off and seeing you don't really know what your team might be capable of coming into this one. It's also awesome, that offensive firepower that we were accustomed to seeing out of the Car Cardinals of East Surrey. So Hannah getting to, into position to grab Coach Lohman here in just a moment. And having to go through the proper protocols, not wanting to share the microphones or things like that, as it's a 21-point lead for East Surrey here at the break. And we'll go down to the field. I think Hannah's ready with Coach Lohman. Hannah? All right, I'm down here on the sideline with the East Surrey Cardinals head coach, Trent Lohman. Coach, how do you feel your offense has done tonight, and what are you hoping to see in the second half? They've done pretty well. We've made a few mistakes uh, that we've got to clean up, but for the most part, I think we've done good, and we've, we've played pretty fast and, and performed what I want. Absolutely, and what are you hoping to change, and what have you seen that you want to really emphasize coming back out in the second half? Not necessarily change. I just want to make sure we don't quit playing. We've got to finish the game. All right, well, thanks so much, Coach. Good luck in the second half. Thank you. We'll be right back with more coming up after the break. Halftime, it's the myspot.nc.gov halftime report here on our Friday Night Rivals presented by Rowan Law, brought to you as always by the Carolina Classic Fair. And with a 28-7 lead for East Surrey at home, time to begin our halftime coverage as we take a peek at our Scholar Athletes presented by Biscuitville. Throughout the 2021 Carolina Classic Fair Friday Night Rivals season, Biscuitville will recognize an exceptional senior student athlete from each participating school with a plaque presentation prior to each game. This week's Biscuitville Scholar Athletes are from East Surrey High School, Rose Craven. East Surrey High School's Rose Craven is a three-sport athlete in basketball, softball, and tennis. She was a junior marshal last year for the 2021 graduating class and is second in her class, holding a 4.5 grade point average. And from East Wilkes High School, Tristan Blevins. East Wilkes' Tristan Blevins is a varsity tennis player and cheerleader. She was named Tennis All-Conference in All-Region last year and is a team conference champ. Tristan is also a junior marshal and volunteers at the American Red Cross. 
He has always wanted to work in the medical field and plans to become a nurse practitioner. Rose, Tristan, and other nominated students are competing for a $5,000 Biscuitville Ultimate Student Athlete Scholarship to be awarded at the end of the season. Since 1966, Biscuitville has been serving up authentic Southern food made from fresh, locally sourced ingredients. Stop by a Biscuitville near you for the flavor of local. Welcome back to the myspot.nc.gov halftime report, and I am now joined with East Wilkes Principal Dustin Webb. Principal Webb, thanks for being here tonight, and we just want to know, can you describe to us how the opening of the school year and the sports season has been for East Wilkes High School? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, uh, number one, uh, for having us tonight. Thank you for asking. Uh, it's been a great start to the school year at East Wilkes High School. Uh, we, uh, our students and our teachers come in every day and they work to build bonds and relationships and uh, we face the same challenges as everyone else has so far this year, uh, but we've overcome those just uh, like we always do at East Wilkes. We do things together, that's our motto, we're better together and, and that's how we've attacked those. Awesome, you mentioned challenges, what are some of the highlights that has already happened this year so far? Thank you. The, the, the main highlight that I would say is that uh, we have students in the building every day with our teachers in person learning, um, building those relationships that I mentioned. Uh, basically, we're doing school and we're having fun doing school. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being here tonight and uh, enjoy the rest of the game. Thank you so much. We'll be right back with more after the break. Welcome back to the myspot.nc.gov halftime report. I am now joined with East Surrey's High School Principal Shannon DePlessy. Thank you so much for being here, Principal DePlessy. Can you just describe to me what makes East Surrey High School a special place? So I think you're seeing it right here tonight. It's, it's the people of East Surrey High School. We have great community members, great teachers, great staff members, great students. And when you look here on a Friday night and you see our stands full, it really speaks to the community support that we have here at East Surrey. Absolutely. And what are you most excited for for this school year? And what is your hope for your students as they embark on this new school year? I am so excited to have kids back in the building and a little bit of normalcy, hopefully, as we move through the school year. And most importantly, I hope that our students get to really, really have an opportunity to have great learning experiences and opportunities like this to do the things that they love and which makes education, public education, so important to our students. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for being here tonight and I hope you enjoy the rest of the game. Thank you so much. We'll be earlier during the game we got to interview one of our sponsors and so here's what they had to say. I'm 
here with our sponsor for the week of the North Carolina Department of Health and Human Services. I'm here with um, Aaron and Matthew, and we are here to discuss the COVID policies. And so tonight, so tell us, what is the latest news regarding COVID in our area? Uh, so based on the, uh, the data that we've collected at the health department as well through the CDC and then through the state, uh, our county currently is red for the number of positive cases and there, we do have a high transmission rate. Um, the percentage of positive cases has been up for those that have been tested from about 16.5% uh, to about 18.6% here recently. Awesome. So why did you get involved and how did you get involved? Um, so I was recently hired at the health department to do COVID-related efforts. Um, that's primarily what I've been doing since January of this year, doing vaccines. Awesome. And so how can we, for people to, who want to get vaccinated, where can they go and how to do that? Uh, well, they can certainly come to us at the Health and Nutrition Center. Um, we are currently offering all three vaccines. Um, we also do five, five days a week for appointments, and we also accept walk-ins. Awesome. And I know you guys do have a personal story to share about vaccination. So if you'd like to share your personal story. Sure. Um, just as a teacher and coach uh, in Surrey County Schools, personally, I think that we all agree that it should be everybody's personal decision whether they do or not want to get vaccinated. For me, it was about my family. Uh, it was about my nieces. It was about my parents who are getting older. Um, just wanting to make sure that they're protected. We know that vaccination uh, doesn't mean a cure, but like any other disease that's out there, uh, if you get vaccinated, you're going to reduce your chances uh, of having severe symptoms with it. Um, we also know that hospital-wise, most of the uh, hospitalizations are those that um, are unvaccinated. Absolutely. Well, thank you guys so much for being here tonight and coming out for Friday Night Rivals and enjoy the rest of the game. Welcome back. I am now joined with event and branding manager DJ Hargrave. Thanks for being here, DJ. What are we watching right now? So we are watching the pretzel stacking contest presented by the Carolina Classic Fair. As everyone knows, food is a big deal at the Carolina Classic Fair, so we want to have something fun for the fans here at East Surrey. Awesome. And so what is the Carolina Classic Fair and what can we expect? The Carolina Classic Fair is an annual agricultural fair that we have every year in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Uh, it is entering its 139th year, so a lot of history there, a lot of tradition there. We'll be, we'll be bringing rides, foods, and a lot of the, the things that people look forward to during the fair every year, and also a few new things as well. Awesome. And so why is it so important for the fairgrounds and the Carolina Classic Fair to support Friday Night Football? 
it's really important for us to be here and support Friday Night Football because it's really about engaging with the community for us. Um, we're always looking for ways to involve, you know, the school systems, the parents, and everyone that's involved with making the Winston-Salem and North Carolina community what it is. So that's why it's so important for us to be here at high school football. Awesome. Well, we're certainly glad to have you here, and thanks so much. Thank you. Thanks a lot. They're going bananas Chris down there. Chris Mark, back to you. All right, Anna, thanks so much. Some smiles down there. Early chance to get a prize from the fair. Yeah. I think you could stack some pretzels on top of your head. I could stack some pretzels into my mouth right I now. Know, I know that, too. <laughs> Each week during our halftime of our Friday Night Rivals broadcast, we'll be showcasing outstanding Thursday Night Lights and Friday Night Rivals game highlights from across the country. Let's take a look back at some of the highlights from last week's game action. Again, he's getting better at it. This is a much better high-hanging kick. Garcia, spin move. Come up to the other side. Can he pick up some blocks? He does. Garcia, sheds a tackle. To the other side. It's hard to take down Gavin Garcia. He wills it in for a Tiger touchdown. Wins. Dean Ross stays on his feet and brought down by Lichtenberger. out up the far side looking for Godfrey. He's got him at the 40, complete to the 38-yard line. Osborne to the to the air. And he's got a receiver out there. And it is complete. They're gonna throw. Now he's gonna run. Evans has the 20. Evans is gonna score! Touchdown! And the Southpaw escapes. Bernari, some space there on the outside, dumps it off. It's juggled and caught for the touchdown. Bracey gets hit immediately, but breaks the tackle. And he has a room. He, gets, he has room down the sideline. It's one man to beat. He's been coming back. Oh, my goodness. What fancy footwork. That is going to be a touchdown. Camden, touchdown to Travis Bracey. What a play of the game. Take a look back at some of our first half highlights. And already early in the ball game, it was East Wilkes that was able to jump out first. It was Graham through the air first, and then how about on the ground? What a nice job by Brody Martin to shake loose for a nearly 60-yard touchdown run. Yeah, an electric first drive for East Wilkes, and we thought maybe that was going to be a spark plug and an indicator of things to come for them, but it doesn't seem that way for the rest of the first half. And then quickly on the ensuing kickoff, Kyle Zinn breaks free, 85 yards for the touchdown. Just kind of wonder how a team's going to respond after a, a three-play drive that ends up in a long touchdown run. Uh, no quicker way to respond than on the ensuing kickoff. And then it was East Surrey dominating the rest of the first half after that. Yeah, again, East Wilkes able to take over a little bit defensively on that front. Three sacks in the first half, but not enough to slow down that high-powered offense of East Surrey. The Cardinals playing at home own the rest of that second half. A deep touchdown pass from Boaz to Allen. Beautiful touch on that one. And still some mistakes even with that being said on East Surrey's side. Some sloppiness at the end of the first half, but again, too high power, Armstrong this time with the long touchdown catch. And that was the final score of that first half. 28-7 lead down to Hannah, who's standing by with Coach Wilma. Thanks, guys. I'm down here with East Wilkes High School head football coach, Jonathan Wilmoth. Coach, what are you looking to come out and do coming in the second half? Uh, sustained drives offensively is what we need to do. We're, we're struggling right now. Sustaining drives, stupid penalties and mistakes. Uh, the sustained drives play better defensively. Awesome. And what is your message to your team coming back out in the second half? Do your job. <laughs> awesome. All right. Good luck in the second half, Coach. Thank Thanks so much. All right. We'll go back to Chris and Mark for the rest of the game. All right, Hannah. Thanks so much. That's pretty simple there from Coach Wilmoth. Do your job as you look at the first half numbers and they tell the story. Not a whole lot of offense there for East Wilkes. No. Uh, pretty simple recipe, though. If you're going to go back and say, what, what do we need to do? We need to do our job. And that's really what it boils down to. Those 75 total yards, so much of that came on that first drive, just not able to muster much of anything else the rest of the first half. And again, for East Surrey, it's been about that high-powered attack led by Bolger Boaz at the quarterback position, really slinging it around and distributing the ball well. Yeah, three touchdown passes for Boaz in that first half. We'll see what he has in store in the second half as we kick things off in half number two after this. You're watching the Carolina Classic Fair Friday Night Rivals presented by Rowan Law.
Welcome you back to David Diamond Stadium here in Pilot Mountain. 28-7 lead for the reigning 1A West champions. East Surrey out to the 21-point advantage as we get set to start the second half. Great first half for Folger Boaz. Three touchdown tosses for the North Carolina baseball commit. And it will be Boaz who will watch his defense as we get ready to watch this third quarter unfold. Certainly feels like a must-score possession for East Wilkes coming out of the break. You heard head coach Jonathan Wilmoth telling Hannah at the break when she asked, what do you tell your team? Just do your job. It is that simple. Uh, realistically, for East Wilkes, it is that simple. Break it down to the basics of football. Don't let them think, just let them react. Let them go about their business. Let's see if they are up to that task to start this second half and get themselves back in this football game. Starting the second half with another Arnold Jones kickoff. Avoid costly breakdowns with energy saving agreements from Arnold Jones Services Heating and Air. It'll be Stephen Brantley as toe meets leather again and the second half underway. Returnable for Martin from the eight. Up the seam. Martin, a big gaping hole, and carries a man with him to the 40-yard line. A return of 32 yards as we start the third stanza of play. Got a nice little seam right in the middle of that field that time. Just ran almost literally right up the middle of the field. And a running back getting a full head of steam like that is a dangerous sight. So a good return out to the 40 and setting your offense up with favorable position to start the second half. Curious if we see Anthony Graham, the wide receiver, who was missed over the last couple of drives it does not look like Graham is out there to start the third quarter so you wonder if maybe the injury a little bigger or more substantial to Graham than first thought this way it comes for Martin tries to get to the edge and a nice trip up tackle there really it was the blade of grass that brought him down but able to get his paw in there was Brett Clayton the junior defensive end yeah, Clayton did a good job of pursuing him down the backside but if Martin just doesn't stutter step there and just gets outside he might just avoid Clayton altogether. It may have cost him getting some more yards on that one. Just a one yard gain, second down and nine. I guess you can't really fault him too much considering he just had the kickoff return to set them up with good field position, but Iron, still. Ironman football, yeah. doing it all. <laughs> this is kept by the quarterback Gentry and he will knife his way ahead for a couple, third down and medium. We saw the first half stats, not a lot of success on the ground for East Wilkes. A lot of that is credited to this East Surrey defense and maybe Mark, especially that front seven. Well, absolutely. And you know, when you look at that front seven and what they do for East Wilkes, very aggressive. They're gonna attack you at the line of scrimmage. And they have kind of that downhill mentality that's, fo that's focused on creating pressure. And they're going to look to create opportunities for themselves, get those takeaway opportunities and get the ball back to their offense. East Wilkes really struggled on first or third downs in that first half. Gentry flushed, dumps one down the field, and in double coverage, it's incomplete. And a late flag comes in. We might get a roughing the passer penalty here as Gentry took a wallop on the back end of that play. Yeah, he got nailed on that one. And boy, that would be a huge loss. Gentry, the second year starter and all conference performer a season ago and Gentry might have just had the breath knocked out of it but unfortunately here for East Wilkes with the training staff coming out I believe Gentry has to come off for one play it does. and was there no flag I thought there was a flag that was thrown but apparently it was not unless they picked it up so East Wilkes now 0 of 6 on third down and that's what Gentry is talking to the lead official here it's Bill Kroom and his crew that have done a really nice job tonight and no flag, so it'll be a punting situation here for Cole Lambert. He was definitely lobbying for it, and unless we just have to catch something on the back end that Gentry didn't get hit high or illegally, it may have just been a clean hit after all, a big one. But that's the case, no flag. Good job. Coach Wilmoth really working the official on that side for a call. Here comes the rush, kick is blocked. Kick is blocked. I believe it was Bowman that got his big paw on it. And the live ball finally spun down at the 43-yard line. So East Surrey making plays in all facets of the game tonight. And that's a third phase of the game that coaches will always tell you about. Special teams coming up big that time, blocking the punt. And as good as the field position was for East Wilkes on their first drive of the second half, East Surrey has bested them in that. They're going to start in plus territory here. 
Feels like East Erie started in plus territory really all night. Boaz dumps the screen. Armstrong slips by one defender, tight roping the sideline. And he will pick up a 12. And it'll be another Crescent Ford of high point first down as they keep the chain moving. Test drive the new Eco Sport at Crescent Ford and High Point. It's got the things you need to do the things you've always wanted. And just a perfect play call that time. Blitz was on for that East Wilkes defense, and Easter was ready for it. Just dump out pass, a little screen. With no men out there in front of him for Armstrong, let him create in space. Picks up the first. Armstrong denied the handoff. Boaz keeps it. Boaz lowers his shoulder and bowls over a defender and then helps him up. It was Titus Miller who's going to get credit for the tackle, but how about Boaz, the physical 6'3 runner? You like that? A little bit of speed out on the edge. and use that 6'3 frame to just roll over the defender. That's on great run, great play call, and good decision making also by Boaz not pitch it out that time. Understanding where he was in relation to his pitch man on the field. He just turns it upfield and picks up another first down. Now the Crescent Ford of High Point first down. They stay on the ground here with Armstrong, who spins away from a couple of tacklers. Armstrong finally ankle tackled down to the 17-yard line. Another positive game as East Surrey finds themselves in the Boost Mobile Orange Zone. Boost Mobile, America's largest and fastest 5G network. Yeah, Trey Armstrong stays pressing the B button. The spin move is a favorite move of his repertoire. He uses it effectively, though. It's a little bit of a power spin that time in the hole. Get some of those extra yards. Boaz this way, underneath for Allen. Allen stays on his feet and scampers down to the five-yard line. Another first down on this drive for East Surrey, their first drive of the second half. We'll talk about Leighton Allen. 6-1 on the, on the roster officially, but very slippery for a taller receiver like that, able to break those tackles and get out almost Punches it in for another six points for this East Surrey offense, but nevertheless sets them up with it in the five-yard line. First down goal to go for East Surrey. Armstrong chatting with Bill Kroom, the referee. And now we're all set. Kind of feels like an Armstrong kind of play right here. Handoff. Boaz back to Armstrong. And to the end zone. Give him six more. It's Armstrong's second touchdown of the night, his first rushing score, and a Sunbelt Reynolds touchdown. Sunbelt Reynolds offering rental locations across the triad to quickly deliver ready-to-work equipment when and where you need it. It's too easy that time. Just operates on the left side of the offensive line. Not enough Cardinals of East Wilkes home to make that one. Too little, too late on the backside tackle that time. It's too easy for the running back, Trey Armstrong. Now ready for the West Rock Extra Point, your local leader in paper, packaging, and displays. Come join our team at jobs.westrock.com. And the snap is botched, and the extra point will not get off here. It's a 34-7 lead for East Surrey as they start to widen the margin here in the third quarter. You're watching the Carolina Classic Fair Friday Night Rivals presented by Roan Law.
Yes, Folger Boaz has shown a lot of good passing game tonight, and he is also committed to go to UNC for baseball, but also open to dual enrollment. He is also has a brother who is Jefferson Boaz, who also played for East Surrey High School, and he also, earlier speaking to Trent Lohman, he said that they are the same name, but the same expectations, so he is really proving it here tonight. Back to you, Mark and Chris. All right, Hannah, thanks a lot. East Wilkes trying to make something happen through the kicking game and scampering out on their kickoff return that time for the Cardinals. It was Weston Brown and East, and, or East Wilkes will get a chance to chip back into this deficit here with 8.43 to go in the third. Well, if there's ever a time to do it, now would be a good time. Of course, falling further behind now, a 27-point lead. And again, for an offense that's completely predicated on running the football, this is not where you want to be if you're trying to get back in a football game. And without their leading playmaker, Anthony Graham, who continues to be on the sideline after going out late in the first half with what appeared to be a lower body injury. We'll see what Gentry and the offense can do here on their second drive of this second half. They will start on the ground. Gentry will keep it and is immediately swarmed under by the Cardinals. It was Josh Parker, the inside linebacker, first to make the play. And you're seeing exactly what East Surrey has done here. They've really just met in the backfield because they're attacking that focal point, that offensive mesh point for East Wilkes. They're not able to get anything going right now on the ground because East Surrey is in the backfield almost right there at that mesh point between the quarterback and his running backs. Loss of three, second down and... 13 here on a beautiful night for football in Surrey County. Isn't it? A little chilly out there. You almost need a sports coat here at the ball game tonight. Man in motion. Gentry again is swallowed up. Swarming to the football. The Cardinals are just ubiquitous defensively. Well, and it, they're just knifing through the offensive line right now. And it's not because the guys up front aren't doing their job blocking. There's just too many guys. And they're bringing pressure straight up the middle of that offensive line. And there's not enough people to counteract that for, for East Wilkes. They've got to find a way to balance that back out. And maybe it's going to have to come through the passing game because running the football just isn't working for them right now. It's first time for East Wilkes. They've started 2-0 and since the 2017 season. And there's been a lot of momentum building for East Wilkes High School. I mean, the fact that they're able to play the game today says a lot on third down and long. This is the only team in Wilkes County that's not currently on some sort of COVID pause through no fault of the other Wilkes County clubs. But that's what Coach Wilmoth was telling us earlier this week. Hey, we've just got to be able to control the controllables and play the next game. Now, this week it was interesting because the next game ended up being three different opponents before they settled on East Surrey. But a good litmus test for this very young East Wilkes team, 24 juniors on their roster, just five seniors. So it's not like the cupboard is going to be bare. This is an opportunity for them to say, okay, had a nice start, and now let's build on that as they get ready for conference play. Still a really tough non-conference game against Wilkes Central before they open up league play against Mount Airy in a couple of weeks. And they knew coming in here was going to be tough. This wasn't going to be a, a cakewalk coming in here to East Surrey. You know the powerhouse that they are. Armstrong fumbles, and a live ball is Colton Hall falling on it, and maybe that's the spark that East Wilkes need. We've seen Armstrong now botch a couple of punts. That's the second one tonight. Did, didn't take such a fortuitous bounce this time for East Surrey to drop back on top, just right off that chest, actually right off his face mask. Hit right off of his face mask, just didn't trap it. He knew it, too. As soon as he lost that football, he knew that went right off his face mask and he just lost it in the lights. So now, positive field position for East Wilkes. Starting on the right side of the 50. Split backs for Gentry. Brown into the second level and picks up another first down. Well designed play that time. That split back set where you got those two backs in the backfield to each side of Gentry in the shotgun. Let them run the same way. You have a lead blocker out in front. It's going to act as a fullback almost in a sense. And your runner right behind him. Good play design that time. Get your guys outside and away from the teeth of that defense. It's been on attack mode here for the last two quarters. Just the second first down of the game for East Wilkes. Another Crescent Ford at high point first down. And now at the 30-yard line. Shimming his way as Martin for just a couple of yards. 
And East Surrey is actually playing the option play. It was a triple option that time that East Wilkes was able to run, but East Surrey played it well, not d diving too far inside where they're sucked up by that first running back who they fake it to, and there's no one on the outside to defend. Played it well, bounced it out, able to minimize the damage there, no gain on that first down run. Second and 10, over halfway through the third quarter. East Surrey shows a blitz off the edge. It was picked up. And again, it's Martin for just a couple. Brings up another third down. Again, just not an offense that's predicated on playing from behind. Not built to play from behind. And even if they put points on the board here, they're going to have to do it quickly. May have been a face mask, honestly. On them. It will be, yeah. Yep. But I think it was just the five-yard variety. The Not the malicious one just the oh. grab and let go oh no sorry about that grab your face mask <laughs> so that's those. the first penalty on east surrey tonight it's pretty good first penalty comes yep 508 to go in the third quarter very disciplined club for trent loman but i think that speaks to the culture that coach loman has developed we asked trent loman in our conversation about the culture and how you continue to cultivate culture and he said it's nothing that i've done he said it's just the kids that are prepared to win each and every Friday night. But as Martin straight ahead, we'll get close to the marker. Coach Loma did say it's the youthful energy that keeps him going. But listen, it's not like the cupboard has been left bare for East right. Surrey either. A team that got to the state championship game last year. 25 juniors on the roster this year. 15 seniors are back. It's a team that won the state title in 2019. Runner up last year. Three state titles now in program history. And I tell you what, it's going to be a hard club to beat mm -hmm. as they continue. You hope to trend in a positive direction. He will not be happy about that flag. It looks like it's going to be motion perhaps on the offensive line of East Wilkes. But there are two things once you get to the time of year where playoff football begins. There's two things that are really going to elevate those teams to true contention. First one would be talent, of course. The second is experience. And East Surrey's got plenty of it. And he, if I'm being honest, he's probably being a little modest when he talks about how he hasn't done anything to cultivate this culture. Because two years ago, you look at what he did with this East Surrey football team. They just take him to the state championship game. They won it. And they knocked Tarboro out. Yep. Almost 800 yards of total offense in that game. I mean, a stunning number. So he's done, he's done his job, maybe not to cultivate it, but to keep it going and allow these kids to thrive, and they've bought into what he sells. To throw on third down this way, and a nice completion, as it's Titus Miller who makes the catch and dances his way down to the 11-yard line. Another Crescent Ford of high point first down, a pickup of 16 yards on third down. And stay tuned, later in the ball game, in our fourth quarter, we'll have tonight's Carolina Classic Fair player of the game, the Carolina Classic Fair, second to none in 2021. Nice throw that time by Gentry. Just stepped right into that throw, nice and easy to the outside. A nice little pitch and catch to move the chains. And now East Wilkes into the Boost Mobile Orange zone again. Man, tell you what, we missed a whole year not having any football last year. And they've already changed the name. I remember when they used to call it the Red Zone. <laughs> See a lot of things have changed. Gentry to keep it. Now dump it. And off the hands that time of the intended receiver, Weston Brown, brings up a second down. Also, in the fourth quarter, we'll have the Roan Law play of the game. Play of the game brought to you by Roan Law. Roan Law fights and has the results to prove it. Good throw that time by Gentry. Second one in a row. Just dropped that one out in the flat. Maybe got his eyes turned around, head turned around too quickly before securing the football. Starts sniffing the goal line before he's secured the catch. Now second down. East Wilkes trying to get a little positive momentum, trying to score for the first time since their opening drive. And it's down inside the 10 yard line, a positive game, brings up third down. And I love actually what you said several times throughout this telecast, Chris, is that this is a litmus test for this team at East Wilkes is you see the team across the field from you and you know that's where you want to get to. The championship caliber program that you're able <laughs> to really model yourself after and look at them and say, we want to be like that. You need to establish that culture. I think East Wilkes is on their way to doing that. 
Maybe not there just yet, but they are on their way. All right, player down there for East Surrey while they attend to him. We'll take a timeout and come back with more third quarter action. You're watching the Carolina Fast Classic Fair Friday Night Rivals presented by Roan Law. Welcome you back to the Carolina Classic Fair Friday Night Rivals presented by Roan Law. All East Surrey tonight in this battle for bird supremacy. Oh. Battle of the Cardinals. Flocked to that one. Oh, uh, yes, indeed. It was Gavin Atkins, the injured player for East Surrey, walked off under his own power. And now it's East Wilkes back on offense facing a third down and six with under three and a half to go. Some movement up front. And it'll be the second penalty of the night, we presume, on East Surrey. And but to your point about East Wilkes and developing a culture and learning how to win, mm -hmm. and that's what this program has to do. I mean, we're again, first 2-0 and start since 2017. They have not been past the first round of the playoffs since they went to the third round of the playoffs in 2015. So they have to relearn how to, to win. And for this club that, as Coach Wilmoth admitted, they're not be blessed with a revolving door of athletes every single year. This is a... 1A school in East Wilkes, and really all 1A schools, as they dump one underneath, and what a nice catch that time. A tremendous catch made by Titus Miller. The wide receiver, no, check that. It is not Miller. It is Cole Lambert who makes a really nice catch. So Lambert for the first and goal opportunity. But they have to learn how to win. They have to cultivate the talent. As Coach Wilma said, they've got some underclassmen that for most programs probably wouldn't play, yep. and they've got these guys into starting positions now. Right, and that's just – that it is what it is. But it's about building that culture and getting your team to buy into what you're selling as a head coach. So it did not give them the first down mark. It'll be fourth down and less than a yard as we approach the final two and a half minutes and a flag from the official on the near side. It's been a really well-played game from a penalty standpoint until this third quarter where things have – Maybe gotten a little sloppy. Second consecutive penalty on East Surrey. It'll be first down and goal to go now for East Wilkes. There's Coach Loman. Obviously a teaching moment as they get ready for another test next week. We'll take on South Stokes on the road, their second road game of the year. And then they will open up conference play in two weeks against North Wilkes. Again, everything fluid and subject to change in the world that we are living in. Right. Clock starts again. First down, goal to go from inside the one. See if they want to power this one inside. This way it comes from Martin up the field, and Martin is in. Touchdown. His second rushing score of the night. And another Sunbelt Reynolds touchdown. Sunbelt Reynolds offering rental locations across the triad to quickly deliver ready-to-work equipment when and where you need it. Martin in for the fifth time this season. I really like the way he powered his way in that time. Took it outside and was in hot pursuit, but Wade just shrug off one tackler, break another, and muscle his way into the end zone despite taking the football outside. Martin's been a very consistent force if there has been one for this East Wilkes offense. The powerhouse in his own right. And now it's Porter on for the extra point. And from the point after touchdown, number eight, Hank Porter. Porter's had a really nice night from the kicking standpoint. Porter the junior. Splits the sticks and pulls East Wilkes to within 20 here. 
Got to chip away at it. And to be fair, as, as many points as East Surrey has put up to this point, they have not been perfect. They have coughed the ball up on a few different occasions now. We've seen them. I believe four fumbles are up to tonight, two that they've lost. So they have not been perfect. There is still time to get back in this game and give yourself a shot. Like, to the credit of East Wilkes, that fumble recovery leading to the touchdown, and you can see that the coaching staff getting after this East Surrey club a little bit too. For a team that you know, has been to back-to-back -back state championship games, that has the pedigree, look, it's a team that has been to back-to-back -back state titles, but they've also won now three state titles in their history back in the early to mid 1960s. So it's a proud program here, Mark. And you can tell by the community support that East Surrey has had tonight, but throughout the season, they don't expect to, to win games by seven, 14 points. They expect to come out here and win every night and win handling most well, uh, To win at home, especially, to dominate when they're out here on the field. I believe that's what Coach Loman and his staff really try to sell like guys we're not just out here to win games and maybe squeak by we want to win in convincing fashion so that we get every team's best shot week in and week out and you know when you beat them you actually beat them it wasn't some fluke it wasn't something that just happened by chance you went out onto the football field and you beat that team and I think that's the culture that they've really captivated here another Arnold Jones kickoff fielded at the 10 yard line and this returnable for Luke Bowman. Bowman's blocked a punt tonight and returns this kick up to the 28. 19-yard return for Bowman. And we'll see what East Surrey does on offense here for the final two minutes of this third quarter, a game that has certainly not been decided yet. Still a three-possession game. And you never know, a turnover, a three and out. Maybe some of that momentum starts to swing back toward East Wilkes. Absolutely. It's felt like a borderline eternity since we've seen this offense on the field, too. They spread it out with Folger Boaz. He'll start on the ground. Boaz calls his own number. Boaz out across the 40 and finally tripped up near midfield. It'll be another Crescent Ford of high point first down as Boaz scampers for his longest run of the night. This is one of those ones that hurts because East Wilkes had that sniffed out. They had Boaz dead to rights, two guys in the backfield, had the pitch man covered, had Boaz covered, and just that athletic ability that we've brought up several times in this broadcast that Boaz has, that lineage that he comes from on full display in that one, just cuts up field and gets a great game. Swing pass, and not much there. A little Folger in the offense. Kind of like a little Folgers in the morning, right? A little stir of the drink. Does it all for this club. Yeah. I'm proud of that one. Hey, are you proud of that I'm one? Really I was going to ask. Yeah, really proud of that one. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps you could say the best part of this offense is a little Folger in your cup. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. You're not getting that anywhere else. That hurts. Second down and 11. <laughs> Armstrong to the outside and gains two. All right, we're closing in the final minute of this third quarter. Give me your synopsis of the game to this point as we prepare for the final stanza. Uh, again, really, it's been su it was such a fast start offensively for both teams, just marching up and down the field on their first few possessions. And then since then, despite the miscues on their part, it's been all East Surrey to that point up until that last drive with East, East Wilkes putting their second touchdown on the board tonight, but it's been all Cardinals and red so far here tonight. A timeout here before this third down play. East Surrey has certainly been very good on third downs tonight, four of eight, and that's really what has helped, helped them sustain drives and put up these 34 points. I think most coaching staffs will tell you if you have a third down conversion percentage of 50% or more, you've probably put yourself in a good position to win most football games. So for them, it's going to be, yeah, we, we, how do we continue to convert those opportunities? Even though we did really well, it's about improving. And I think that's a, a broader picture of what you can paint here for East Surrey here tonight. Yeah, they've looked really good in spurts, but there still have been miscues and things that you can still teach and you can have them grow upon. And that's got to be really exciting for Coach Loman and the staff as, as they've played well but you know they haven't played their fullest capability. I'm waiting for this timeout to end before we continue on with the final 
55 seconds of the third period. And I think the thing that you're starting to see for both of these clubs is maybe a, a little more continuity at both of these clubs mm -hmm. as Weston Brown was the injured Cardinal for East Wilkes. Both of these clubs and both of these coaches talked about the challenges that summer presented. Of course, both football teams playing in the spring, or really in the winter, and then because it's such a small athlete pool for these two clubs, these 1A schools, a lot of guys on both sides were on the baseball field. For East Wilkes, they played until late June as Boaz rolls out and now will dart toward the sideline and step out near the 40-yard line will be good enough for another Crescent Ford first down. On the flip side, for East Surrey, they played baseball until June the 28th, made the regional final, won the regional final, made it to the state championship series. And for East Surrey, not a whole lot of football that was played or practiced this summer. Both coaches talked about how they wanted to give their young men an opportunity to go out and be teenagers, enjoy the summer. For example, East Surrey had just eight workouts in the month of July and leading into camp in August. And some of the players only made one or two workouts as Boaz behind the defense hits Armstrong for another score. But hold the phone. There's a flag at the line of scrimmage. So the touchdown will be wiped off. It'll be an infraction against the homestanding Cardinals. And that will not make the head ball coach very happy. It will not, especially when you think about where the play went. Second time tonight, it's been an illegal motion penalty yep. against East Surrey. It's just those procedure penalties will drive coaches crazy, especially when they bring back touchdowns. On top of that, it'll drive them nuts on, at any point during the game, but if it's gonna bring back a scoring play, it's just that much more of a point of emphasis in the week after that they're going to coach up their guys on. To finish the point about the summer, though, for Trent Lohman, he said this has been the most stressful part as being a coach is trying to manage his players being teenagers but also wanting to get back after it from a football standpoint. And it's kind of the same story for East Wilkes as well as that ball popped out almost. And did East Wilkes pick it up? They did. Another fumble. And East Wilkes causes the turnover here. Don't look now, but a touchdown here certainly changes the complexion of this ball game. But to finish the point for Coach Wilmoth, he said that they really went and did a weight room training, wanted to have his kids done by 9, 30, 10 o'clock in the summer so that they could go out and still have their summer. And it was, again, Brown on the fumble recovery. Well, and when you look at the past year and a half, really, that we've had as a, as a world, if you will, there's been so much that's changed. And we talked, we've talked several times about the schedule and how fluid it has to be and how it could be ever changing depending on the circumstances that take place. You have to realize we're trying to get back to as close to normal as possible. And these are still kids. You gotta still let them be what they are. Pressure on Gentry. Throws downfield and misfires, trying to hit Miller on the crossing route. But you got to let them still still be kids. I mean, they're still in high school. Allow them to still have fun, enjoy what they're doing as much as they possibly can because the world has changed already so much over the last year and a half. You have to find some level of normalcy, especially for the young minds that we're trying to shape here in America. And I, I think both coaches understand that, but they both talked about that, about how nice it is to be able to be back in the fall playing football right. at its normal time in the schedule. Nothing quite like the Friday Night Rights lights on our Friday Night Rivals presented by Roan Law. Big thanks to the Carolina Classic Fair for their sponsorship. Thanks to all our sponsors for supporting the broadcast this year. It is nice to be back. To throw, Gentry, fade, far sideline, incomplete. Trying to go for that Russell Wilson moon ball. Adams, the intended target. Drop it out of orbit. Brings up third down and 10. And perhaps it'll be the final play of the third quarter. I think you can start to see East Wilkes starting to sense that, that urgency now that they've, they've climbed back within 20 points. Start to see like, okay, we need to start taking some shots. We need to move this ball. We, we need to have, if nothing else, it falls incomplete. The clock stops. It saves us time in that sense. Just one of nine on third down tonight. The East Wilkes offense. Gentry now four of 14 through the year. A lot of pressure on him though, as it is here. We'll go this way, and again, unable to complete the pass with Miller. 
Brings up fourth down, four seconds to go in the period. I think you can see that pressure still affecting Gentry. Pressure was coming off the backside that time, off the left side of that offensive line. Gentry feeling that pressure, shifted just a little bit to his right and just forces that ball way too far to the sideline. Armstrong back deep to receive the punt of Lambert. Armstrong, the explosive playmaker. Time out here for East Surrey. Armstrong has been part of a kickoff return unit tonight that has already seen a kickoff return go to the house. Kyle Zinn ran a kickoff back 85 yards for a score. The opening points of the game for East Surrey. And they were off and running. East Surrey took a 28-7 lead into the break and have been able to maintain that lead here in the third quarter. Yeah, and really almost for Armstrong, it's been boom or bust. We've seen the touchdowns he's had tonight. Three to his name, but he's also had the miscues on punt returns, two muffed punts and fumbles that have gone away. And uh, it's been a mixed bag at times, but he is a premium athlete at that position. You see the look of disappointment, the look of let's coach him up some more from Jonathan Wilmoth in his fourth season. First time head coach, long time assistant at Mount Airy. Was a quarterback, as we mentioned, at Surrey Central from 2002 to 2004. So he understands. He understands what winning football is like. And no doubt, this is going to be a East Wilkes program that continues their positive momentum. Would be shocked if this is an East Wilkes program that's not back in the playoffs this year. Absolutely. Looks like East Surrey going to bring a little rush here. Picked up nicely by East Wilkes. And Armstrong will let it bounce. And a bit of a longer field to go here for East Surrey when we start the fourth quarter. It's all East Surrey at home here as we go to the final stanza in Pilot Mountain. Great to have you with us for our Carolina Classic Fair Friday Night Rivals presented by Rowan Law. We're back with the final quarter after this on My 48. Thirty-four, fourteen. East Surrey looking to move to two and zero here at home as they open up the home portion of their schedule. Beautiful look here at David Diamond Stadium. I tell you what, this is one of the hidden gems in North Carolina high school football. It has been such a pleasure to come to Surrey County. First time we've been here for one of our Friday Night Rivals broadcast. Everyone has been terrific. We've seen a great football game, and if you ever get a chance to come up here and see a football game, absolutely do it. Absolutely. It's just, it's really tucked right back in here. 
some of the wooded area back here. It's a beautiful little setup they have here at East Surrey. Folger Boaz, or Folger Boaz, beg your pardon, back to work for the offense. It's Armstrong ushering a defensive player aside and gaining six on first down. I loved it driving in today. You saw all the East Surrey Cardinal flags outside of the homes. Welcome to Cardinal Country. It's a community that surrounds this football team, surrounds this athletic program. Reminds you of the glory days, if you will, of the small town high school footballs mm -hmm. where the whole community shuts down because of the game on Friday. This is this is what it's all about. Right, and, and I was about to say, this is what it's all about. For these kids to, to come out here and know that everyone is here to watch them. Uh, Friday nights are reserved in the fall for football. We're watching Armstrong put on a show here tonight along with the rest of the offense. Another Crescent Ford of High Point first down. Crescent Ford of High Point, we keep you rolling. And how many of these players with the tradition that East Surrey has and the tradition that East Wilkes is trying to cultivate, how many of these kids, especially for East Surrey, now grow up as grade schoolers or middle schoolers coming to these games, maybe playing football with their friends off in an end zone and growing up wanting to be an East Surrey card? This is the goal, yeah. right? Yeah, you come to Friday nights, and that's your that's for a lot of kids, that's your first real exposure to football. And, man, it's glorious. You come out here. The lights are on. Everyone you know is here. And that's your world at that point. And then you finally get a chance to perform on that stage to know that there might be something bigger. Boaz performing on every stage tonight. Connects with another deep ball. It's the first catch of the night for Luke Brown, the junior. A huge play through the air of 35 yards and a crescent forward of high point first down. Nice throw by Boaz. We've said that several times tonight, but good way to track that football in the air as well. Come down with a big time catch and set up your offense with a first and goal. First down, goal to go from the six. East Surrey trying to punch in another back breaking score to really salt this one away. Inside the Boost Mobile Orange Zone, America's largest and fastest 5G network. I guess Orange is still in the red family. It's halfway there. Armstrong cuts to the edge, to the five, and to the pylon for six more. But there is a flag, and for the second time in the second half, a touchdown wiped away for East Surrey. After picking up their 15th first down of the night, this will be first and goal from a little further back. That's going to hurt a little bit more for Armstrong, too, because that's his second touchdown call back. He's holding against East Surrey. What a nice job by this officiating crew overall tonight, led by Bill Croom, Brian Marshburn, David Southland, Ron Sankey, Brian Kerwin. I'll tell you what, a really phenomenal job by the officials tonight. Not many people know, but there is a little bit of a shortage of officials mm -hmm. across high school athletics in general. And certainly can see some of the apprehensions that people might have to go and want to become an official. But I tell you what, the guys that are out here in the striped shirts tonight, they're in it for the right reasons, mm -hmm. in it for the kids. Love of the game. Absolutely. Yep. So if you're thinking about it, do it. Yeah. I mean, you have a good time. It is, it, you have to remember, you're still getting the opportunity to call a football game. You're, you're, you're on a field. And you see some really great players like we've seen for both sides tonight. Completed pass to Leighton Allen, a late flag flying in. Foul came out. The, the foul has occurred. Game getting a little sloppier here in the final period. Kind of a cluster of players down there, too. I wonder what this flag would be on. There was one of the East Wilkes players was a little bit animated. Yeah, personal foul caught against East Wilkes. That'll be half the distance as we take a look at tonight's Carolina Classic Fair player of the game. The Carolina Classic Fair second to none in 2021. No surprise, it's Folger Boaz who has really been the leader of this offense. Yeah, the leader, the captain of this offense. Holding his own, running the football, throwing it, slinging it all over the place. He has been the catalyst for everything his offense has done tonight. And a very deserving player of the game. Boaz with some pretty impressive numbers tonight. The North Carolina baseball commit has tossed for three touchdowns. Continuing the great start to his junior campaign. Only a junior. You see his number is there, 184 yards to the air. They go to the ground here. And not much doing for East Surrey on first and goal. Yeah, well, we talked to 
said earlier in the broadcast if the family was split between being here and up in Blacksburg. God, I hope they weren't up in Blacksburg. <laughs> but you see the numbers, 184 yards, three touchdowns. He's been good through the run game as well, manage the offense. Efficient, I think, is a really good word tonight. And we talk about the youth of East Wilkes a little bit earlier. 25 juniors on this East Surrey team. And it's not like they're going to lose a ton. I mean, they're going to lose 15 seniors that are yep. big playmakers, like a Trey Armstrong, for example, and will lose a, a little bit in the skill position. But the quarterback, the line all coming back as that one wafted to the end zone and a little bit too long there for Luke Brown. Tell you, if you are looking at 1A, going to be hard not to put a little asterisk by East Surrey as a team that could contend to get into December. Mm -hmm. Now, let's remember, no more split classification. There's right. no 1A and AA. So now everybody in 1A, 2A, 3A, and 4A competing for just four state championships, which will make things a little trickier. Mm -hmm. You don't have the split division, so you never know. Think about a team way out in the western part of our state, a team like Murphy that has won multiple state championships at the 1A level. It's right. Murphy and perhaps East Surrey. You don't want to look too far ahead, but the, the prognosticators like us can, can maybe eye way down the road a potential third or fourth round matchup mm -hmm. between two teams that have some really strong tradition. Well, absolutely. And I think that's the possibility, the, the, the potential for some of the matchups you could see in the playoff, in the playoffs as you see Armstrong running and just slipping down there. The, the field might be getting a little slick here, partner. Yeah, a little chilly night. Yeah, um, but the potential for some of the matchups you can see in the playoffs, not just in 1A, but 2, 3, and 4, it's, in a word, tantalizing. I mean, you got to think about how some of these programs, their history, their how they've performed, the matchups are just endless. And a field goal attempt is blocked. That's a live ball, and it's scooped up by East Wilkes. And the kicker, Brantley, finally brings him down. Kick was blocked by East Wilkes doing a nice job. Kyle Thompson getting his big paw on it. And it's the second field goal that has not been converted by East Surrey tonight. They missed a 21-yarder in the first half. That one from 23 and was blocked. in decent field position here for East Wilkes as we take another peek. And you know what? One of those positive things you can talk about, a low kick. So still penetration was good enough to cause a block kick there. But one of the positives you could talk about tonight for East Wilkes has been their ability to stand up at the goal line on two separate occasions, as well as taking the football away from this East Surrey offense. That's been a bright spot for what East Wilkes has done tonight. If you wanna talk about building that culture, putting yourself in a position to be a championship program, it's gonna start with things like that. They're just hustle plays. Now what has really hurt the Cardinals of East Wilkes tonight, and you love the fight and the grit they're continuing to show as they stick on the ground with Martin, Anthony Graham, who made some plays early in this game, he's been the big playmaker through the first two games of the season for East Wilkes. He went out late in the first half. We've yep. not seen him at all in the second half, and that changes the dynamic of your offense. Yeah, and of course, we have no idea what happened with, with Anthony Graham. A dynamic playmaker, again, had a, has over 200 yards, almost 300 yards rushing on the season through two games as a wide receiver, which is absolutely unheard of. But you got to think, maybe this is a, a circumstance where they – say, okay, you could go back in, but we're going to hold you out for the rest of the game because you, we know that you're more important to us throughout the season than you are for this game tonight. And want to win the war, not just the battle of the ball game tonight. Is that one complete out near the sticks? Could be good enough for another Crescent Ford of High Point first down. Crescent Ford of High Point, we keep you rolling. And they will, I think, mark him just a, a little bit short. I don't think he might have that stick there, Chris. Well, they need the the right foot spot again, and they get it. It is indeed a first down. You talk about the miscues for East Surrey. The penalties here in the second half will not make Coach Loman happy. Neither will the special teams issues, two missed field goals, a fumble on an extra point as well. They've turned the football over, put the ball on the ground. A lot to clean up for East Surrey as they continue their non-conference next week. Coaching points. Yes. That's exactly what they are. They are coaching points. And again, that allows you to really look at your team and say, guys, we may have done well, but we were not perfect. And I think that's what you want. Your third game of the season, or rather your second if you're East Surrey, you shouldn't be looking at your team and saying, we're perfect, there's nothing we can correct. Throughout the season, there are going to be there are gonna be areas that may start to falter. You have to build them back up. Tonight, your talking point is going to be turnovers. We got careless with the football in our hands. And if we're playing a team that's, if we're being honest, on our level, this could cost us a football game if we're not careful. 
So it's going to be those talking points in a game like this where they are they have a big league and a nice cushion. It's not as big of an issue, but once you get later on the season, and again, playoff time, that's going to be trouble. We don't want to be playing your best football the first week in September either. Gentry going for it all, wide open and incomplete. Adams trying to juggle the football and like a game of hot potato, unable to bring it in. I thought for about half a second that he was going to catch that thing on his back. And it really looked like it for almost half a second. Great throw, by the way, by Gentry. Get that ball down the field. I mean, that's, that's an easy six. And just could not corral that one in. That's sort of a microcosm of the night offensively right. for East Wilkes. But a team that will be back, a team that will head back home where they've enjoyed some success, already winning a game 42-7 to this year. They'll take on Wilkes Central, we hope, next week. Mm -hmm. To the outside here, it's Brody Martin shaking free, and Martin trying to get in for the third time tonight. Instead, he reverses the field position and has another Crescent Ford of high point first down. A lot of great after gain of 17, a lot of great games coming up here for you on my 48 as we take another glance. Nice way to get outside that time by Martin. That's where he's had a lot of success running tonight and just lowers the shoulder. Nice collision on the back end of that one with Trey Armstrong. A running back on running back collision, if you will, there. Talk about great football. You can keep it right here on my 48. College football's opening weekend continues tomorrow as Wofford, the Terriers, invade Elon to take on the Phoenix. Big Big South CAA showdown there. We'll have it for you right here on My48 tomorrow. Our pals Taylor Durham and Matt Krause bringing it to you. Marilyn Payne will roam the sidelines. The Terriers and the Phoenix. And then we will be back with you, all things we hope, next week for another edition of our Carolina Classic Fair. Friday Night Rivals is Andrews visits Parkland. So we'll greet you from Winston-Salem and Deaton Thompson Stadium. Mm -hmm. It's the fifth penalty of the night, by the way, on East Surrey. That will certainly be a talking point. Check that it was on East Wilkes, their fifth penalty of the night, more of a talking point there. So, again, a lot of football tomorrow. Wofford and Elon right here on my 48th, and we're back with you a week from tonight. Parkland and Andrews as those two clubs renew their longtime rival. Pump fake for Gentry. Goes to the air and juggled. Oh, wow. And what a catch. What a phenomenal catch made by Titus Miller, who tight ropes the sideline and picks up a remarkable grab. That looked like it was dead to rights to East Surrey. Uh, it was just bouncing off great concentration on the back end of that one to bring it in. Thought about hot potato on the one, <laughs> the one long throw before. Great awareness, good reaction. Picks up a nice chunk of yardage on that one. Gain of 32, it's first and goal. After the Crescent Ford of High Point first down. And before the play, a timeout called by East Surrey. Not a bad idea. East Surrey will take a break. We'll take a timeout too. Just five minutes to go in this one. East Surrey leading by 20 on the Carolina Classic Fair Friday Night Rebels presented by Roan Law. Thirty-four, fourteen, East Surrey leading as we continue on in the fourth quarter. Let's take a look now at our Roan Law play of the game. Roan Law, the triad attorneys who are here to help. And it was early in the ball game. Kyle Zinn, 85 yards, a house call on the kick return. Right after East, Sur or East Wilkes scored their first touchdown of this ball game on a 56-yard touchdown run. 
We kind of wondered how East Surrey was going to respond. A big response there. It came up empty on their first drive after driving the length of the field, essentially, then allow East Wilkes to score on a long touchdown run. How are they going to answer by getting punched in the gut twice? A nice response on that one, and for all intents and purposes, East Surrey has been in full control of this one going forward. I love that he smiled for the camera, too. Oh, knew exactly where he was. Have a little awareness. I love it. Yep. First and goal. Back to action, and East Wilkes tries the ground and down to the one-yard line. There you see Zen's 85-yard kickoff return for the touchdown. That is our Roan Law play of the game. Roan Law, the tried attorneys who are here to help. Actually not as easy as one may have guessed it to be to pick the play of the game tonight because there's been quite a few plays. Well, I think that set the tone. Yeah. Do you disagree? I just think there's been a lot of great plays. Tonight. Okay. Back to the ground and nothing there. Swarmed under is Easton Martin. And it'll bring up third down and goal. Another phenomenal stop after a gain of our loss of five. It was Kyle Zinn who ran the kickoff return back, making a good play on defense now. Yeah, just knifing inside. Again, that pressure coming straight through the middle of that offensive line, more bodies than they can protect. And that's just a great play call in that situation by that defense of East Surrey. Third and goal. Looking to pass the ball here. Spread it out wide with four out wide. They look left side now over the middle. And we'll bring up fourth down. Looking for a flag was Lambert. None was thrown. And we'll see what East Wilkes selects to do now on fourth and goal down by 20. No reason not to. They'll leave the offense on the field. Yep. See if you can close this gap. There's still three minutes and 46 seconds left on that clock. So improbable, maybe. Impossible, no. And you know, stop here. East Surrey can hang their hat on. You know, they pitched a shutout ever since the first quarter. Yep. Gentry on the bootleg, cuts it upfield. Gentry toward the goal line, and it stopped short. So this East Surrey defense holds, and they will turn it over on downs with the Cardinals. A will play right there. You gotta have the will to get in there. East Surrey just collapsing and pursuing to the football, collapsing down, and Gentry had nowhere to go. Good effort on that East Wilkes sideline to get within a yard, but not quite enough on you, that drive in tonight. Now a chance to go into the four minute offense if you're East Surrey here, no surprise. The Cardinals will start on the ground. Armstrong gets the carry, a little surprise that Armstrong still in there in a 20 point game. But again, this is a East Surrey team that did not play last week, had a COVID pause, be able to play this week. So maybe trying to get a few more reps. Coach Loman did say he's treating the non-conference like a true preseason to get his guys some reps, to get his guys ready for league play, which is still a couple weeks away. And again, it goes back to how weird the schedule has been. You play a spring season, and then you kind of have to limit practices throughout the summer because you've got to remember that these are still kids. As Armstrong takes the handoff there, gets close to a first down. But for them, yeah, you got to treat these like preseason games because you're just not sure more so than a regular season. You have no idea what you're really looking at, especially when the schedule, as we've seen for both of these teams, has changed already so much very, this early in the season. Very fluid, yes. for sure. We talk about the culture of East Surrey. I mean, this is a team that has won nine games or more every year since 2012. They won six games, six and seven in 2012. You dissect that a little bit more. They've had 10 wins or more every year since 2013. The only year they didn't win 10 games, they won nine in that stretch. I mean, Pedestrian effort. Yeah. And this is a team that, that, as we talked about earlier, Coach Loman can, says his offense can run for 300 yards, pass for 300 yards. We've seen the balance. We've seen the dynamic offense. I've been really impressed by their defensive effort tonight, too. A team that just seems to have a nose for the football. They swarm to the ball. I mean, you see the makings of a great team here in Pilot Mountain. You see how good they can be. 
it's just going to be those finer points of the game, cleaning up the turnovers, not turning it over and giving your opponent a chance to stay in the game. Boaz airing it out here, and up to make the catch is Luke Brown, and he's got nothing but green grass and clear field in front of him. It's another house call for East Surrey, and an exclamation point on a phenomenal night, 86 yards to the house. It is the fourth tossing touchdown for Folger Boaz tonight as Brown hauls in his third of the year. And that was a full-on moss. Straight up over the top of the defender, running down the field. What a punctuation on this one. I mean, he took it right off his head. Yeah. Impressive for the 6'4 junior. Talk about someone who's going to get a chance to play right. in a couple of years. Yeah, that's him. Now time for another West Rock extra point after the Sun Belt Reynolds touchdown. It'll be Brantley on to try to cross the T and dot the I here. He drives this one through, and we'll take a break. 105 seconds to go here in Pilot Mountain. It's all East Surrey at home on the Carolina Classic Fair Friday Night Rivals presented by Roan Law. In the battle for bird supremacy, it's the home standing Cardinals that are protecting their nest tonight with a 41-14 lead and 105 seconds to go. You make in bonds like that should be a Cardinal suit. <laughs> the Cardinals are the state bird of the state. Fair. We'll try to justify that. End over in kick is into the end zone. Another Arnold Jones kickoff. Arnold Jones services heating and air, trusted and dependable for over 60 years. Touchback brings it out to the 20 yard line and a chance for East Wilkes just to build a little bit of momentum on the backside of this game. Yeah. Again, now it's just about executing, right? Executing the plays that you're given. This one is, you know, we're done essentially. 100, a minute and 44 seconds left, but you still have to make sure you're finishing this game. Regardless of what end of it you're on, you still have to go out there and until that whistle blows, you're going 100%. No quit in either one of these teams, especially for East Wilkes. As I said earlier, and I think you believe it too, be shocked if this team is not a playoff club. As tackle there, that'll be a horse collar and tack on 15 extra yards as Martin drug down. Especially if they can stay healthy, you get Graham back. Yep. Remember he missed all of the second half. You, you certainly hope that he's okay because he is a dynamic playmaker. Right. And, and I've been really impressed with Martin tonight, too. Yeah. His running style, how hard he runs, he's per a perfect fit for this offense wants to do. And Gentry, I mean, he's a great yep. manager of the ball game. He is in his second year as an all-conference quarterback last year. He's so, shown some arm strength. I think the second half, he's really opened it up more. We've seen, I think, a better display of what we know an all-conference quarterback to be. And you look across the offensive line, a couple of sophomores, a couple of juniors up there as well. I mean, it's a young offensive line. But they are certainly learning as they go. And remember, not a lot of offseason for either one of these teams is Easton Martin gets the call here, and gains a couple of yards. Part of that trio of Martins on the roster for East Wilkes. As we approach the final minute of this one. Just goes back to all that room for growth. Quick timeout, there's an injured East Wilkes player down, and that looks to be Martin, the running back, a little slow to get up. I'd like you to stay with us after the game. We'll take a quick timeout and then 
Hannah will be down on the field to chat with Coach Lohman, present the Carolina Classic Fair Friday Night Rivals, presented by Roan Law Trophy. Good to be handing out some more hardware, and then Mark and I will wrap it up, and we'll get you ready for next week on our docket. Andrews at Parkland, looking forward to that one. We got, we got a pretty good slate this year, We partner. do. A lot of good games yeah. coming up. A lot of playoff teams from a year ago. A lot of clubs that should be deep. And, and while we have a moment, we'd like to take a, a second to extend all of our thoughts and prayers to our friends at Mount Tabor High School. Just a senseless act of violence earlier this week. Was driving into town today and saw all the Spartan strong billboards. And we certainly echo that. We're sending all of our thoughts and prayers to the entire football team, to the entire Mount Tabor community. And just no sense and no place for that in our society period, but especially in our education system. So thinking about all our friends there and looking forward to, to catching up with Mount Tabor as our season moves along. Absolutely. 73 seconds to go here in a game that has been all East Surrey in the second half. Seen some good things out of East Wilkes overall, but East Surrey's just, from the moment they had that kickoff return for a touchdown to answer, it's kind of felt like this game has gone in their favor and they've had Maybe not complete control, but they've had relatively firm control of this one going forward. Looking forward to being back at Deaton Thompson Stadium, one of yeah. our favorite venues. Parkland and Andrews should be fun next week. Straight ahead, another Crescent Ford of High Point first down. Clock will stop to move the chains as Colin Hall gets his first carry of the night. I was going to say, I think the last time we saw Parkland, they had an overtime win. At Glen? Yeah. Yeah. So... Always a fun ball club to watch. And of course, Andrews as well. Had them in the past. Again, a great venue from where we're going to be going to for it. So. Yeah, hope to see a lot of our friends out at Deaton Thompson Stadium next week. Hope to see you right back here on our Carolina Classic Fair Friday Night Rivals. All of us will be back and just glad to have football back. Gentry with half a minute to go. Scrambling toward the sideline, and he'll slide down for another first down. Stayed in bounds, though. That'll keep the clock moving. Nice decision. Get outside the pocket, pick up some yards, and the clock continues to move. And that might be all she wrote for this one, partner. And it looks like that is going to indeed be the end of the night. Coach Wilmoth telling his team to head to the sideline. The two clubs will shake hands. And what has been a thoroughly impressive effort for East Surrey, who will come off of their pause, move to 2-0. and And for the first time this year, East Wilkes suffers defeat. Stay with us. We'll come back with our trophy presentation after this. You're watching the Carolina Classic Fair Friday Night Rivals presented by Roan Law.
41-14 East Surrey. with the winners of the game, the East Surrey High School Cardinals, and I'm here with Coach Trent Lohman. Coach, your offense really did a great job tonight putting up 41 points on the board. How proud of these guys are you? Very proud. Uh, we had some adversity. We tried every way possible to lose in the second half, but they kept coming back. Uh, defense played their butts off tonight. This is a really good offense, and our defense flew around, so I'm happy about these guys. Awesome, and you are now moving and continuing with a undefeated season. How do you plan to keep up this level of intensity? There's a, there's a standard and an expectation here, and these guys know that, and they bring it themselves every day. Awesome. Well, congratulations again, and we are going to award you this trophy tonight for being tonight's Friday night rival winners. And again, congratulations, and enjoy your celebration, guys. Thank you. <laughs> Chris <laughs> Mark. Yeah! A team that is used to receiving some hardware picks up some more here at home tonight as Boaz finishes with 270 passing yards. It's just an all-around nice night. 430 yards of total offense for this East Surrey club. 160 on the ground, 270 through the air. They limit East Wilkes to just 79 yards through the air, 210 yards of total offense. A dominating effort from East Surrey tonight. If we need to throw it for 300, if we need to run it for 300, if we need to stop them and keep them under 300. I think East Surrey is capable of all of it. It's just going to be those final points to get the cleanup as the season goes on. East Surrey now 2-0. East Wilkes suffers their first loss of the season. And we'll look forward to our ball game next week as we continue on our Carolina Classic Fair Friday Night Rivals presented by Rowan Law. We'd also like to take a moment to thank everyone who makes this game possible, including our sponsors. Thanks to Capital Metals and High Point for giving us our plaques and trophies seen in tonight's game. Cooks Reynolds for those high end zone views and Mountain Fried Chicken for our crew meal. Also, thanks to our participating high schools and their administrators for our Carolina Classic Fair Friday Night Rivals. For Mark Covert, Hannah Brady, and the rest of our team, led in the truck tonight by Wesley Myers and Lori Bates, this is Chris Edwards saying good night from Pilot Mountain, where it's all Cardinals at home. East Surrey wins it 41-14. So long, everybody.